Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vainglory Invitational Series, uh, bringing you guys tonight, this 64, part of the official Challenger Series. And we are excited to be bringing you uh, the latest matches as we start Group A of Split Number 2 here in the autumn season. I am joined with my casters tonight, Tasty Bacon and Humanist. Guys, welcome. Thanks for joining me as we get ready for this split. It's a pretty exciting uh, time here on the fold. Yeah, it definitely is. Thanks for the welcome. I'm excited, uh, honestly, to have this new reset on the Challenger Series. I'm sure a lot of teams have been practicing up and are hyped to uh, make it as far as they can here. Yep, and also joining us, it's Tasty Bacon. Tasty, uh, how's it going tonight? It's going pretty good. Humanist and I coming fresh off a European Challengers broadcast and now bringing the action right on over to North America. Should be a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, we are looking forward to it as well. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting teams, so without further ado, we are going to jump into the brackets for tonight uh, as uh, we do have uh, quite a few teams here. Some of them you guys will recognize coming in here, starting off this winner bracket. Uh, and of course, the first seed that we will be streaming tonight, it is going to be Nemesis Titan going up against Team Uranic. Now, Uranic is a team, you know, bottom of the bracket. Uh, maybe many of you guys have not heard of them, but Nemesis Titan is one you guys most certainly have, as they were actually in the Evil Eight, getting knocked out during the challenge battles last split, and now they are sitting here at the top, uh, hoping to reclaim their former glory. Uh, Tasty Bacon and Humanist, as we uh, look at this first matchup, this is definitely a pretty tall order for uh, Team Uranic, but what are your guys' thoughts on how Nemesis Titan looks to recover going into this season? Well, I think, I mean, Nemesis Titan, they've had a taste of what uh, everybody else wants, right? And either they liked that taste or they didn't like the taste. The fact that they're here trying to battle back in, you gotta imagine they liked it. And so I imagine they're also going to be playing very hard. And after getting kicked out, that usually gives a team a wake-up call like, hey, we really need to practice. And so they are probably come in with that kind of advantage here. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they are definitely very strong. Uh, they've, you know, been able to... Uh, play up against some of these top-seeded teams for some time. And uh, coming down here into the Challenger Series, although a lot of these teams have performed phenomenally and we've gotten to see their talent last split, uh, they definitely look to try to show that they really are worthy of going back into that Evil 8 or at least reigning dominant here in the Challenger Series uh, for this second split here. So uh, we are getting word uh, as we wait here um, that it looks like uh, they... Uh, Team Uranic has not shown up yet, so we're going to give a few more minutes for that to take place uh, and then otherwise jump to another match here in just a few moments. Do we have a link to these brackets, Dragonborn? We certainly do. Absolutely. Nice. Let me just send that to you. Yeah, it's always nice. I think everybody likes to have that up there. So, yeah, I, this is, this is going to be great. Bacon and I got to cast uh, Europe earlier this morning, and I uh, got to say, it was pretty wild. Yeah, things definitely got wild and crazy over in Europe. We had some really, really ridiculous games from... We started off, I believe, with a uh, horrendously one-sided affair, and then finished with a two-versus-three victory. Yeah. So, all sorts of fun stuff happened in Europe today. Yeah, the, the two versus three Dragonborn, that was pretty legendary stuff. Dang, that's that's harsh, man. Uh, it sucks to have to kind of start off the split, you know, not being able to get your full roster there uh, going up against a uh, team. But, you know, to pull out... Oh, of... they had their full roster. It was uh, They were actually winning, and then their third player disconnected. And we paused, waited a few minutes, and they were never able to reconnect, and they still ended up winning. Wow. That's, yeah. That is <laughs> After legendary. After a Kraken push. They defended a Kraken yeah, push. Yeah, they defended two a Kraken three. push. Two versus three, and then one. Now, was yeah. the higher seed the team that had the two players, or were they a lower seed? I don't uh, we don't know. Those seeds were not publicized. They were so. winning the game. They were the better team. It was a game three, though, so they had lost the game. Yeah, but... <laughs> but it just kind of shows, like, you never know what's going to happen in Challengers. So it's always a good time to tune in and see what's going to happen, especially on day one. Like, this is where we get so many 
potential One thing I've craziness. learned after all my casts here with Bacon, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in the Challenger series. Yeah, absolutely, Wait. guys. Oh, someone invited me to a party. I thought it was the right one. That was not it. I've gotten a lot of party invites right now, and I don't know which one to take. Well, while <laughs> so we... I'm declining all of them until I hear otherwise from Dragonborn. And and that is the right call as we are waiting. Uh, actually, I will say we probably, unfortunately, it looks like uh, Nemesis will not be going against Team Uranic uh, as Team Uranic may have forfeited. Uh, they're just waiting to hear confirmation, and we do give a nice solid 10 minutes for that to take place. But uh, as we get ready, we'll probably be jumping into another one, so you guys can actually set that up there uh, for me if you don't mind. But when we take a look at these brackets, uh, I just want to kind of highlight some of the teams... Uh, let me pull this up here real quick. That are going to be uh, playing tonight, and I know you guys have probably seen a little bit of this. You're probably looking at right now, uh, humanists, because we are in Group A. And so for everyone watching for the first time, uh, there are two groups to these Challenger Series splits. Um, the Group A plays one day today, and Group B will pay, play tomorrow on Wednesday. And it's 64 teams total, uh, but we do... Focus on the first 32 uh, and then the second 32 each day. Those two teams are going to go through week number one and then if they can survive, go into week number two and with the hope of making it to week number three, which is the finals kind of eight top teams uh, that will be competing. And those top teams will be then, of course, competing for the top three positions in the Challenger Series. So, you know, there's a lot on the stake here because, um, you know, these teams want to be able to go up into the Challenge Battles beat out one of these Evil 8 teams and be able to claim their spot next season uh, in the Evil 8. And that would be fantastic. But it's a lot of games that they have to play. Um, we're looking at like just just today they're playing three rounds and then three to four rounds tomorrow. And then week number three they play another four rounds. So it is a lot of matches for these teams. Yeah, it's a lot of matches. It's a lot of fun though. It can be stressful. I mean, some of these teams like you make it through a uh, winner's bracket round, then it drops down to the elimination bracket, and then you have to fight your way all the way through that. It could be a long road to get there, and it can be very draining. Sometimes it's just like a stamina test at the end of it. It, it can be, and for a lot of these players, that's exactly what we've heard is this is really challenging. There are so many games, but it really shows uh, who's uh, got the, um, the motivation, the stamina, and uh, the dedication to come in here day after day uh, and uh, perform at the highest level. Some of the great teams that we did get to see perform and did really surprisingly well last season, you know, with uh, um, we had Vertigo Black, actually. They actually moved all the way up to a fourth seed after their performance last split. Uh, I think they really surprised a lot of people. I don't know if Humanists got to see it, but I know Tasty Bacon, you were there with us as we got to see kind of some of their matches unfold, and it was really impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a really great job. Yeah, they knocked us out of uh, the tournament. That felt oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. It was you that they uh, kind of upset. Yeah, that did happen. And uh, so you do know that all too well. <laughs> you but they performed great. Uh, they did a great job even yeah, going into week number three. They really did. It was impressive. And it's great to see. I always I always like to see new iterations of teams. Well, that's no problem in, in A. It's always the roster swaps. But the new blood in the new iterations of the teams, and uh, it's been pretty exciting to watch. I think a lot of these guys they could easily make it up into the Evil Eight. They just got to get that synergy going, practice up, and uh, let that magic happen. Yeah. Now the thing that yeah, I want to go back to the the point you were touching on with the the length of the challengers and how many games you do have to end up playing in. If you were to uh, get knocked down to the loser's bracket, I believe at any point... Elimination bracket. The elimination bracket, my apologies. Uh, then, <laughs> if you get knocked down to the, the elimination bracket at any point during the tournament, you have to play 11 games. Unless you are knocked down to the elimination bracket at the very end. Like, if you are literally in the <laughs> yeah. bracket finals... But if you were getting knocked down any time before then, you have to play 11 best of three series. And no. now, just to put that into perspective, the Evil 8 teams, the team that if you win all three weeks of the Evil 8, or make it to the finals all three weeks of the Evil 8, you will have played nine best of three series. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. That's a lot of games. 
Yeah, it it's is. yeah, it's a lot of games, and uh, these players have definitely felt it. But uh, it's it's something that you know what they they show up here and they've come up and stepped up to the challenge, and uh, we really do get to see the very best teams, the teams that really put in the most work and dedication make it all the way through to the week number three. So that's the goal here uh, as we look at this bracket, um, and that is uh, what all these teams are striving for here uh, in this uh, Challenger series. So, the, you know, 64 teams, we're looking at hopefully uh, getting one for you guys to stream very soon, but we got a few minutes to wait as we wait for the final confirmation from the two teams here. The first round's always a little bit tricky, Humanist, because uh, a lot of these teams, again, you know, you have 64 teams total. A lot of them do run into issues with their rosters coming into the final stretch here. So as we wait, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be back hopefully with the first match to stream tonight in this Challenger Series for split number two. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. All right, everybody, we are back here. Sorry for the delay. Uh, we are still trying to sort out uh, this final uh, roster for Team Uranic, trying to get them in here, but it does look like uh, there is a no-show, at least so far in their part. We're hoping to get that resolved here, but if not, we're going to jump into game number two uh, of one of the other series that are taking place right now. So we will get you guys something very shortly here as we wait. Uh, I am here, of course, joined with Tasty Based Bacon and Humanist uh, as we kind of start looking at this roster for split number two here in the autumn season. And, you know, again, there's a lot of exciting teams in this group, Group A. And uh, I think, you know, it kind of sits with the number one and number four seed really looking strong here, with it, which is uh, Nemesis Titan and Vertigo Black. Uh, but then again, a lot of other strong teams coming up to the rank. Some teams that actually surprised us when we look at uh, when we were looking at um, the last split. Uh, V-Boy Squad did very well. Uh, OMG United actually uh, impressed, did it fairly well. OMG uh, uh, Off Meta Gaming, something that Humanist knows a lot about. Uh, they really surprised, you know, moving up uh, through kind of a surpassing maybe what some of their expectations were. So we're definitely really excited about uh, seeing how these teams kind of go in through it. But, you know, Humanist, you also have a team that is in uh, the, the Split 2 Challenger series for this season. And uh, it's not playing tonight, though, but uh, you guys are uh, probably practicing, getting ready for that. Well, if we are playing tonight, it's going to be a very interesting evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not much, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really cool. I think the thing is, like, at this level... 
you got a, a lot of guys that they'll play together, but they don't get that crazy team practice, and maybe the synergy's not all there. There's a lot of talented players in the Challenger series, and uh, it's great to go up against them and, and play. Like it's a little like you you get into rank you, and like a lot of times teams are facing each other, and of course they're sweating. Uh, constantly as as much as they can to get that ELO, but it's a little bit different when you find yourself in that tournament bracket. Exactly. Bacon knows. Bacon's Bacon's like on deck, ready ready to put me in, coach. Bacon's yes. got a team. Don't leave him out on this. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say thanks for uh, mentioning. It. Humanist has a team. Tasty Bacon doesn't isn't involved in it whatsoever or anything. Yeah, cool. Bacon is the follow through in the throw. I'm the, I'm the super sub. <laughs> <laughs> if we find things going a little too well, <laughs> exactly. Any moment, if if you're ever at risk of winning anything, yeah, like if that's we what I get to come in series, and make sure that <laughs> boom, sure fix. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it looks like we do have an official uh, disqual or. Forfeit, unfortunately, from Team Uranic. So Nemesis Titan, they do move on to the wow. next round of two. So yeah, we kind of are sitting here in the wings. We are waiting for our second uh, matchup. So we're going to jump into a game number two uh, very shortly. And it uh, shouldn't take too much longer as a lot of these first games uh, of round one are wrapping up. So as soon as they are, we're going to jump into one. And it looks like the one that I'm eyeing right here that I've got uh, in front of me, it's going to be Infinity Rebirth versus um, Aeon. Uh, and this is a team, let me just get this roster pulled up here. Uh, as we, Again, we don't have the seeds for you guys on all of these teams, uh, but Infinity Rebirth uh, did do fairly well last season. We saw you know, the return of Haboni. A lot of people might remember him from Gangstars, uh, and he's playing with two pretty new uh, players to the competitive scene. They've been playing competitively for a little bit, Shattered Ardea and Trinomial, uh, and they're going up against uh, Hot Dog Killer, Rocket 01, and 1900 again these are a lot of players that are very new to competitive scene uh tasty bacon so this is the matchup we're going to hopefully jump into momentarily and so uh which which matchup was this again just to make sure if i get the invite i'm ready to go for it uh it is uh infinity rebirth so you should be getting an invite from trinomial oh, i just got it Awesome. Yeah, we are about ready to jump into actually game number two of this matchup uh, as uh, they look like they've got game number one. We're going to get the update on that first game here in just a second. Uh, in just a few seconds, see who won. All right. And, and so the update we got is Infinity Rebirth did win game number one here. So as we get the... Uh, this all sorted for you guys. We we'll guys will get you into that matchup here in just a second. So it is going to be 1900 and Mr. GQ uh, playing uh, as well as Rocket 01. So that is going to be the matchup for tonight here from the opposing team. I do apologize for the delay here. Looks like we are ready to start uh, this draft, though. All right, guys. So we do have the first game. Uh, it is going to be Infinity Rebirth versus uh, Aeon. So as we get ready, uh, get started into this matchup, I am going to kick it over to Tasty Bacon and Four Court Jester for the first or second game. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Tasty Bacon and Humanist for the second game uh, of <laughs> uh, that good. In I'll say it's an inside joke, but it's not uh, for game number two. Uh, Infinity Burst up one, so let's get right into it, guys. Tasty Bacon, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Blueberries. It's been great to be here with you <laughs> and uh, Bacon. I mean, at the where at the start of the series, it's gonna be a, a long night, man. <laughs> well, humanist, I'm not sure if you're uh, aware of it, but essentially this goes dates back to uh, the challenge battles when it was myself and Fuji casting, mm -hmm. and multiple times throughout the night, uh, Dragon Ball would call. Actually, each of us got it at different times before Court Jester, so. <laughs> It's uh, it's just sort of a trend now with Dragonborn, apparently, that whoever whoever he's with, he just thinks is Four Court Jester. 
That's funny because Playoff Beard called me Four Chord Jester too, and it's the only other name I've ever been called. <laughs> but it's an right. honor because let's be real, Four Chord is kind of a god. The yeah, beard, a little bit. Like Craigasm and the casting abilities. Wow. Except for when he makes me solo cast games, that's that's mm. not quite as fun. But, but that's pretty cool. Ooh, Langley Lang. Someone send Starboy a burrito. This is this is the comp that Langley is all about right now. This is, is it? This is the, yeah, I mean, he's into the Black Feather, but you get the double heal with it. It's pretty strong. On the flip side, hang on, they got a pretty pretty strong <laughs> comp as well. Like, I was actually about to say, you know, meanwhile, while all this is going on, we haven't talked about the draft whatsoever, but uh, we are uh, going to be seeing the Finn Sky Kestrel on one, the side of Ion, and it is the Lyra Black Feather Adagio. The double heal buff the Adagio, or buff the uh, Black Feather. Uh, you know, this is a composition that in the summer championships we saw have a lot of dominance, and but it was usually with a more tankier, uh, you know, third individual like the Rona or the Krull had a lot of success with the double heal. But I could definitely see it working with the Black Feather. Yeah, I mean, I think Black Feather's in a great place right now. We saw it picked up a little bit earlier, but uh, it should be used to pretty good effect here. The thing is, like, they, they, if they find themselves splitting apart, I think everything will collapse for them as a team. They, they really need to take advantage of the fact that they can heal each other constantly, use that bright bulwark, control an area, and let Blackfeather just find that target and execute. Like, Kestrel, she's very squishy. Yes, she's a little bit elusive herself, but if Blackfeather gets on target, like, it can be an easy kill. Yeah, it absolutely can. And so, Infinity Rebirth, they're going to be... Really looking to uh, get the pressure down early with this carry Lyra in the lane. Starting with a weapon blade. Uh, I really hope it ends up not being a weapon uh, Lyra, as uh, Von C has already done enough oh, damage with that. But uh, Boney! a rocket, Finn! And that Finn is dead. 1900 made his rotation down. The glimmer shot's off the mark. Double kill for a body. He's on one. The bright bulwark's down. Is he looking for the triple kill off the bat? He's not going to get the triple kill. Trinolio gets it, but that uh, that's three kills going the way of... I don't even know what these teams' names are right now because, well, I'm <laughs> unprepared and unprofessional. Infinity Rebirth? It's Infinity Rebirth, and the other one is very easy uh, because it is literally their tag is their team name. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just trolling them. No, I'm so happy about that. <laughs> like, it's... I, I'm actually kind of upset that they're down 1-0 because it's one of the few times where a team is not only like accurate with their tag, which Infinity Rebirth, they are also very accurate with theirs as well, but uh, having your good. tag be literally your team name, oh, it is wonderful. Mm, Pregasm from Bacon over here with the, <laughs> the proper taggage. Yeah, what a start, and uh, wow, you gotta be scared. Now, granted, Finn, he, he's great if he lands a quibble, early on that can chunk through some people but other than that he's not really bringing too much to the party mm -hmm. and uh that was just such a bold teleport out without having vision you know yeah it really was and now with that infinity rebirth they're gonna have a big advantage in the early game not only did they get those kills they also got a lot of farm advantages as well as you can see just two and a half minutes in a thousand gold in their favor and Haboni with this Black Feather starting off with a heavy steal and then getting some defense. He's going to be looking to go aggressive once again, but Sky was just a little bit too quick at clearing out her camps. Okay, Trinomial, uh, not giving enough credit over to uh, Ion right there. He's going to get punished for it. So one kill going back the other way as Trinomial gets taken down. But he's going to have boosts up when he comes back from the shop, so I, I don't think this liar should be getting caught like that again. But Haboni, make his way up the lane with Shattered Ardilla. Wait, had, had, did you say how to pronounce that? Um, Shattered Ardilla? Shout of Shattered. It's not, shattered. not that difficult of a name. But it could be Ardilla, right? No, Ardilla. it's Ardilla. Ardilla? Ardilla? It's okay. A-R-D-I-L-L-A. -L -L Seems easy. good. It's too much. It's too long of a name. <laughs> Well, Mr. GQ is going to be uh, dodging out with that Surrey Strike. A nice quibble from Ooh. Rocket, but Trinobial. Trinobial rotating down and Woo! Oh, Infinity Rebirth. They are really laying into Ion right now. Yeah, this is uh, this is not the way they probably would have hoped it would play out. I also think it's very interesting to have like the Rome Adagio over the Rome Lyra, who you know we could 
make uh you know make the debate happen to mm -hmm. say that it's not maybe the best way to be playing it out but they're making it work they absolutely are making it work and i mean don't get me wrong i love carry lyra but oh my goodness that is so much damage uh i love carry lyra it's just that lyra is a better roamer than adagio is currently mm -hmm. um and i feel like adagio is just as good as a carry as lyra is but this is obviously the way they opted to build this and well, it is six to one definitely uh, not going to argue the effectiveness of it at this point yeah it's pretty pretty tough to argue that and i mean for these guys it's all about like what your team feels comfortable with your play style and how you want to make it work now i don't know these guys well enough to say exactly why they're doing it but mm -hmm. you could make the argument that potentially like black feather jumps in you drop the gift of fire on him they're burning amp boom 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 and they're playing aggressively early, so that's that's the the way it should kind of work out. Otherwise, like Lyra, she's controlling area with right bulwark, and she's dropping the heal. But like the gift of fire, it, it can add a little more to your offense. Yeah, it absolutely can. But uh, I feel like it would add just as much, if not more, as a carry does you. The the biggest reason why Lyra is considered a better roamer in this situation is the fact that Lyra's heal scales very well off of bonus health. Uh, and so that's right. the that's the main reason. Yeah, I agree with you, man. That's how I would prefer to run it. We actually um, haven't practiced this before, but if we were to, I imagine we would run it uh, with that flipped around. Yeah, well, Lyra right there just getting taken out by 1900. You got to feel, you know, if you had a little bit of bonus health you'd, with extra healing and extra just having extra health would have been able to survive that barrage from Kestrel, but... <laughs> that barrage from Kestrel. Either way, it is still 6-2. to two, Still a fairly comfortable lead for the early goings in favor of Infinity Rebirth. They do have the 1-0 series advantage as well, so they are, they are prepared to throw then. That's what we have <laughs> confirmed. To throw a series, you must win a game. Yep, that is uh, one of the laws of the throw. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first laws, honestly. Yeah. In order to throw, you must be ahead. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah, at least when it comes to the uh, the uh, higher end of the throw uh, <laughs> echelon. But Trinomial, he continues to farm up here, has a level advantage over level 6, Lyra to the 5. Mm -hmm. control, and we see Mr. GQ make the rotation up. And so we have the 3 of Ion kind of clumped up here. And I feel like they just, they're kind of choked out. They don't necessarily want to accomplish anything they just don't want to go anywhere else on the map yeah it's kind of uh the case here there's nothing in their jungle to farm because they already cleared it and you know they don't want to go aggressively into the jungle because they are definitely worried about hoboni at this point so uh, just kind of hanging out in the lane seeing if they could find an opportunity to jump on the trinomial but nice vision the flares went out from shattered ardilla to spot them our shattered it's gonna take quite a bit of damage from that forward barrage is Adagio though, and there's plenty of healing oh, on the team. Now we're playing games. Now we're playing games. Havoni will take away the mid. I thought we might actually fight there. Up in the lane though, that's a defensive arcane passage by Trinomial. Had to get yeah, himself out of there. Trinomial stepped forward very aggressively, thinking that Ion had all rotated down towards the jungle, and only to find out that only Mr. GQ had done so, and <laughs> was in a lot of trouble. So a quick passage out in order to get to safety. Yeah, that was uh, a clincher right there. And whoa! Two man forced to go into the combo! Turn up! Wow! That right there is why Finn is still a top tier roamer. Dude! Like, and that's, <laughs> the combo. like that's one of my favorite combos, honestly. A little active camo, a little forced to cord. I'll make it happen, Black Feather. Okay! A bony, okay, yeah. Black Feather! A bony, a bony making bony it happen! He's set up for the triple kill. Haboni, oh my goodness. Get it. Root and Tootle triple kill Haboni. What a play. Haboni on the Black Feather. Coming through, disrupting the gold mine, and finding a triple kill. One versus three. And getting an immense gold payout for the team to boot. That is what you call an MVP. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> What do you do? <laughs> All right, seems good. Langley, take notes. Watch this. We're gonna need some of these level of plays. A bony. I'm just gonna frontline for his team. Turret doesn't look like it's gonna be long for this world. And that's that's a found just for the Kestrel who was low. 
and it was spotted out right here. It feels like they want to aggress into Ion here. When there it goes, there Arcane Passage, right Bulwark's down, Kestrel's gonna get ripped in pieces, but so does Trinomial! Mr. GQ lights him up, that verse is gonna come out, blocked by Finn. Mr. GQ with the Ford Barrage, he's gotta be careful! Black Feather was in deep, he wanted it! Not quite gonna find that kill. Man, Haboni is having not much fear right now, I guess I, he's got Shattered... Uh, I mean, would you be really point. having much fear if you just picked up a 1v3 triple kill? Like, you have to be just brimming with confidence after a play like that. Well, that's that's how you make mistakes, Bacon. It is. It is how you make mistakes, getting uh, too confident. But right now, Haboni, 6-0-3, can afford to be a little bit confident. Trinomial, however, needs to be the one that uh, is a little bit more careful. You know, using the arcane passage, getting into the middle of the team. I understand that's you know one of the ways that you typically engage with a Lyra, but that's when you're a Rome Lyra and you have you know a fountain and a crucible and all yeah, sorts of defensive items. Like you so. said before, when your Black Feather is going off like this, like just enable him, make it happen, Captain. And he's in right now onto 1900. The active camo did go down. He's cutting backwards, but taking a lot of damage. Trinomial will find that one, abusing the range of that Lyra. A lot of damage coming out. Mr. GQ should be going down. Death from both is going to be off the mark. Yes, he is. Haboni's under this turret oh, deep, but goodness. with a double healing and an ace buff, it is no harm, no foul for them. 13 to 5 in under 11 minutes. Everyone on the Infinity Rebirth voice chat needs to be thanking Haboni right now because he is hard carrying the mess out of this game. It is absolutely incredible what he's doing with this Black Feather. Man, I'm telling you, Black Feather is back right now. Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, he saw some action in the Evil 8 as well. Saw him a whole bunch in Europe. Definitely seems to be the current uh, flavor pick for these competitive players. Oh my goodness, the breaking point's completed. Trinomal eating a lot of damage to Arcane Passage out the backside. Now it's going to be the verse coming out quite early, but hello, my name is Saboni and I'm here to fight. 1900 is getting lit up. A Rose Offensive will take care of that. Trinomial getting pretty low, but they find a heal out of his team. Oh my goodness, Mr. GQ is dead. Rocket, what are you going to do? Just going to die. 810 damage coming out on that attack. I yeah. mean, that was insane. Yeah, Haboni is in full hardcore carry mode. 807 has two offensive items completed, including the breaking point and the serpent's mask. Has two healers to keep him alive during these engagements on top of that. And mm -hmm. well, there goes that third turret. I know, he's basically an Ozo at this point. I mean, I don't I'm not trying to exaggerate, <laughs> but you understand the point I'm making. <laughs> I don't think I do, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you don't get it, couldn't explain it to you no matter how hard I tried. Gold mine. Because there is no taken to explain, but... Infinity <laughs> Rebirth right now. This, this is just uh, gold on top of gold. Net worth lead. Ever expanding and continuous accumulation 7, of resources across the map. Beacon, you're, you're captain of Team Ion right now. What do, what do you do? Um... Not Lay this. down, try not oh, to cry, Mr. cry GQ. a lot. <laughs> Mr. GQ! He's dead. He would have died to a scout trap even. He had no yeah. chance there. Rocket threw that force to court, trying to peel them off of his sky, who didn't seem to realize that the world was collapsing on top of him. Yeah, if you're the captain of Ion right now, I think uh, you do your best to try and convince Haboni to stop playing right now. I don't no, 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 you are the captain, what, so that's what you do? You're you're calling Haboni right now. Yep, get him on the phone, you call him, make sure, make his game... Like You don't have you. his number, like, how do you reach out to him right now? Like, you you, you didn't realize it was going to go this bad. <laughs> you have his mom call him! That's what you do. That's what uh, we'll find out later, if that was the plan or not. Mr. GQ, kiting backwards, oh getting God. lit up, Rose offensive forward, the Fountain buying just a little bit of time, I can't believe he's actually still alive, Haboni! He's got some breaking point stacks for this party. Jumps onto 1900. That's not the kill. Rocket will go down. Now it's three versus one. This poor Kestrel. Not going to be able to do too much in this situation. One shot, one miss. Ah, things are just not going their way, man. Yeah, this this was just a, a much uh, more coalesced team right here. And of course, Haboni hard carrying 
the crap out of this game. It's pretty impressive. It's very impressive. Is he gonna go down after the crystal gets exploded? He does. Yes, he does. Okay. Doesn't count on the score though because it was after the crystal. So nine zero and nine. Boney on the black feather. That's j it's just ridiculous how strong Haboni was in this game. I mean, in Europe, we had a very similar situation where the first series that we saw was very much one-sided. And if game one, we obviously didn't get to see game one of this one, but if game one was anything like game two, then, uh, well, it was at least quick and easy for Ion. <laughs> I guess so. There's not much more to say. Dragonborn... Uh, I, I think you were you were lurking back there, camera manning it up. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Oh man, I mean, it was interesting to see both Blackfeather and Kestrel make it into the draft, right? Well, like, we maybe seen... we'll get those thoughts in just a second. Bacon, I don't know, man. Maybe we should uh, try to get Haboni over on our team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just saying. Um... As I had myself muted for you guys, sorry about that. Uh, did that um, it was interesting to see Blackfeather and Kestrel both make it out of the draft. I mean, we don't see uh, them kind of make it that far. At least one of them is getting banned. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Humanist? Do you think that that was a mistake, or is it is it splitting the two between those two teams uh, worth the risk? I think there were larger problems. There probably the was, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> the thing is. The Black Feather only has this kind of game if it gets out of hand quite early, and it did from the first rotation when they tried to teleport, didn't have vision, and Finn gets killed, and then you have a double heal comp that the, they're just going to continue to take your mid, heal themselves up, and just choke you out. And that happened constantly. Havoni was never behind at any point. This is a pretty obvious result. Yeah, and very obvious that even with uh, some really great plays coming out of Aeon, uh, that they just weren't able to to deal with the Black Feather. They were doing a great job actually in the lane. It seemed like the pressure was there, but as soon as uh, it was really the turning point was that that three v one, right? When Haboni came in and just completely eliter uh, eliminated the entire enemy team. Three v one them. It uh, it just went downhill from there. He was already pretty. Fair. They had that one combo that was very godly. Like it was the forced accord into the active camo. They got a like double kill off of it. That was one in the top right mustache bush. It was very well executed. There just wasn't much more of that kind of play. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean it's um it just and they were actually pretty close in kills at that point, right? Like they weren't down that far behind. I think they actually were ahead in kills. They picked up two early kills in the game, and then that was kind of like a, a point where they kind of had momentum, but it unfortunately didn't carry us uh, much farther than that for them, uh, and they go down. Uh, congratulations, to Infinity for birthday. Move on. We will be getting you guys into round number two in just a second as we get ready for the next matchup. When we return, uh, we'll be right back though after this quick break.
Welcome back, everybody. As we get ready for round number two, we're moving along very quickly. Uh, there have been a lot of matches already with round number one, and we'll be updating you guys very quickly on those. But we are going to get ready into our next matchup here very soon. It is going to be Radiant Arcana versus Infamous Halcyon. And uh, this is a team that uh, I think we uh, don't know a whole lot, but uh, Radiant Arcana has been here in the Challenger series before. Uh, and uh, with a few players that uh, some of the competitive teams may have heard of. Uh, not uh, not a lot of veterans here, though, uh, for court. I'm sorry. Ah, did it again, man. Humanist. Uh, I do apologize as we get ready for uh, the second matchup. But um, not a lot of names here that you recognize. So this is going to be a pretty fresh um, uh, matchup between teams that uh, are fairly new to the competitive side here in Vainglory. And we are excited to showcase them for you guys in just a few moments. Uh, as you guys, uh, I don't know if you've been able to look at the rosters here. Uh, take a quick look at them to see uh, if any names pop out at you. The only one that pops out to me is on Radiant Arcana. It's Josh is a babe. Um, he's been around. I've seen him on Twitter and I've seen him play uh, in a lot of matches like a screenshots and uh, definitely a high elo player. But, you know, Radiant Arcana's uh, they've got to kind of uh, prove themselves this time as uh, they didn't make it very far in the first split. Uh, so second split. Uh, now they got a chance to see if they can change it up here. Humanist, <laughs> not for court, man. Uh, any uh, any thoughts as we look at some of these teams? You know, the Challenger series is kind of this enigma. In it's not at the same level as the Evil Eight. Some of these teams here are looking to you know kind of gain that reputation. But until we until we see how it plays out, there's always a lot of skepticism on. All right, are they going to really? you know, perform well during the draft phase? Are they going to perform well during the in-game phase? What's something that you see a lot of these young teams fail at early on in their career? Early on in their career? Ooh, man. Like these, these yeah, these young teams, when they get started out, they <clears throat> there tends to be a well, lot... Here, here, I'll, I'll tell you a problem. It's not just for the early teams. It's for the veteran teams as well. But I think it's a result of having a lot of young players throughout the competitive scene. Nobody sticks with a team for long enough i don't think i think a lot of people give up on a team very quickly because they don't have immediately immediate results and uh some of the best teams you'll ever see are teams that just stuck together stuck around and found that synergy over time i mean of course it doesn't work you know eventually you gotta cut your losses and move on but i would say you know stick with it don't be you know dissuaded by just being put out of one challenger series when you're a, a new team that has never done anything like this before yeah, and you're right. We do see this with uh, every single level of the competitive scene here in Vanglory. It's it's due to the short seasons, and the seasons didn't used to have that continuity, which now they do, right? It all leads up to Worlds every year, where that wasn't necessarily apparent starting off last season. And, you know, you see a lot of changes, a lot of uh, people jumping around from team to team. Um, and that's a good point. Uh, it seems like, and that kind of plays into some of the other flaws that they may have, right? Like, not being... Uh, not being uh, clean on like rotations or you know strategizing draft, these kind of habits really take a lot of time building with uh, people over and over again. Well, it's it's a lot of layers like within a team that aren't just so apparent. Like you, there's okay on an individual level, you're making skill shots. You should know like when the timings of your your jungles up, when uh, when to take objectives, when not. But you also have to trust your teammates. Like I'm not going to turret dive if I'm not having faith that bacon's going to be there with a vanguard and a fountain to bail me out if i need it you know and if you're not making the highest levels of plays that you need to then you're not going to move on to the highest levels of the tournament it's just that simple so there's you have that level as well then you have just the communication which is like calling and focusing the right targets down like that comes over time some people will never develop it there's some teams even at the evil eight that are, are there because they're incredibly talented they have a lot of experience but you'll see They'll never quite make it because of that that communication that they just don't seem to develop. Right. And, you know, the kind of the flip side of that and what's been unique about this challenge series, uh, this split, is we've seen a lot of teams actually stick together. And uh, we will be probably showcasing some of those matches later on tonight. Uh, but we've seen teams like uh, the Sillies, for instance. Uh, they've changed their name to Instincts this season. But uh, that's a team that a lot of those players have been playing together in some form of capacity for a long time. And we see that with uh, Cloud9, too. These are players that have been playing together for a long time as well. It doesn't always equal instant success, but it's definitely clear that having that synergy and that dedication sticking together 
that can be a very valuable asset when you're really trying to work on a lot of the other parts of your game. All right, so it looks like we're waiting for the second team here to get in, uh, Infamous Halcyon. Uh, a little bit late to the party, should be here momentarily. Tasty Bacon's been uh, sitting back, lurking here with us. Uh, Tasty, any thoughts uh, going into the second split? Things that you're most excited about, maybe? Uh, I'm mainly just, you know, excited to see what teams are going to rise up to the challenge and, you know, potentially get themselves into the Evil Eight. It is unfortunate that, you know, this split, it's sort of, you know, whoever makes it, if you make it into the Evil Eight, you don't really have the opportunity to go to Worlds, but you do, uh, at the very least, you know, know that for next split or next season, you will be in the Evil Eight, you will have that guaranteed prize money, and you'll have a whole lot of time to practice up for that for your first split in the Evil Eight. Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, that's something that is a little bit different uh, this time around uh, as we get ready. And actually, it is going to be. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, we're going to be actually having Arden Arcana going against Triggers Down. Uh, they uh, they also won their match here, and we should be getting ready. For that momentarily. In just a few moments. It looks like uh, they're just waiting uh, to have those players accept. I'm not sure if we've gotten confirmation from Triggers Down that they are indeed getting in and forming the party. But we will take you guys over and take a quick look at these teams and the matchups that we've got going for you guys so far. Uh, Infinity, uh, ooh, that's a little bit dated there as we get open. Yeah, it's Radiant Arcana versus Triggers Down. And uh, it's, uh, again, a lot, a lot of young teams here. Uh, we have not really seen any of these players before. So this is going to be pretty exciting uh, as we get into this uh, for, uh, Humanist. So sorry, guys. Trying to sort out exactly where this team is as uh, just waiting for confirmation. Just looks like uh, they're just a little late uh, to the party. So we are going to then take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, though, we should be ready to get you guys into this matchup uh, in just a few seconds. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
All right, everybody, we are back, and we are finally going to be able to bring you a matchup as we did sort out just a few small technical issues with some of these teams as we get ready for round number two. First round can move very quickly, especially when we are looking at some of the higher seeds, and so that's kind of what happens. There's a little bit of a lag for some of these teams to kind of get in out of that first round into the second round as we wait for their opponents. So we do have, finally, uh, we have uh, Radiant, Arcana, and Triggers Down. So that is the matchup we're bringing you guys next. And again, you know, most of these are players we do not know much about. So there's very little we can talk to you about other than um, what we kind of hope to see on uh, some of the teams we hope to see kind of progress here through this split. So, uh, without further ado, it does look like everybody's in. And uh, we should be able to get you guys there. So, as we take a look at the matchups, Radiant Arcana going against Triggers Down. These are the rosters that we have in the queue right now uh, going into this draft. So, take it away, Tasty Bacon, as we go into game number one. All right, thank you very much, Dragonborn and Humanist. We are See, he going... doesn't even try to say my name anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, uh, I'm just going to not even bother. Uh, but yes. either way, we do see the Finn coming through as the first pick here for uh, Radiant. Nice. Is their team? Let's go double check. What? Their team Radiant? Arcana? Hey. hey, hey. Nice. Yep, Radiant, Arcana, and Triggers down. So both teams with very nice team tags. Wow. T down. And raw. Let's get it on, a little black feather, huh? I haven't yep. seen a little black feather recently. <laughs> yeah, black feather definitely again, just very popular right now. Arden gonna come out with it. I'm uh, I'm always hyped for an Arden pick. Uh, we'll see uh, if the Celeste and ooh Samuel has a final pick up here. Really? Gonna be double CP? Or are we gonna see a little Von C weapon soon? <sighs> I would hope that it's double CP. Or we're we gonna see a little Von C carry Finn with the Rome. <laughs> or are we gonna see a little i don't even know who would have done it but weapon celeste that hasn't been done and someone should get on that for everyone someone did it on my stream once when i was i was doing viewer games i was just yeah. playing games with viewers and someone ran a weapon celeste wow. and we won with it so where's the rhyme when you need him bacon right look uh, at this triple melee triple melee it's I'm not sure if I like the idea. Uh, triple melee is very difficult to actually engage onto your opponents with at times, especially someone like a Samuel or a Celeste who can just be like, oh, you're they coming towards closers. me. Like, they have gap closers, but like Celeste can just be like, oh, you're coming towards me. Here, have a core collapse right in your face. Or Samuel and Black can just like, like, fight backwards Swiss forever. Rose offensive. No, but like, he has to use the Rose move. Offensive to. It's your you just dropped core collapsed. Point. I rose offensive. Now what? But you would have rose offensive first, and then I would core collapse. No, it's not gonna. No, I'm already in position because I've been vanguarded. I'm ready to point. There's a lot of barrier here, and uh, it feels good, man. No, honestly, like you, you make good points, man. They they will if they're hesitant, then they will have trouble closing the gap. <laughs> I think if they strike like lightning, like bottled lightning. Then they can make it work. You, you just jump on one of these targets, you burst them down, and uh, I'm I'm very curious to see the build on this black feather this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it is a weapon or a crystal black feather. Uh, looks like it will be a weapon Taka picking up a second weapon blade to start things off here. Looks like it will be double crystal for the side of Radiant Arcana as well. So, uh, just a a small preview of what's to come, perhaps. But right now. They're leaving uh, Sethery to farm this camp on his own. He will be able to do so. Now he might get a skirmish. Nope, looks like uh, they are actually going to be fighting a bit in the lane, though. Soda is taking a lot of damage and is going to get underneath the turret, but I don't think it's going to huh. matter. Oh, boy. Oh, hi, my name is Sethery, and this is my disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is, like, they there wasn't anything they could do to not take the kill. It was literally went over to the turret. Like, uh, the Celeste didn't even actually touch him. The kill went to the... That's how uh, powerful the Celeste is. <laughs> Celeste just stared at him and just died. So this is like, oh, 
Oh, the sweatiest DDoS of my life <laughs> on his way back into the turret. No, I'm kidding. It's not <laughs> happening right now, but you know. Okay, so uh, Dragonborn, it looks like we got a little pause going. We don't know how long it's going to be. Players are responsible for their own connections, yada, yada, yada. When this is looking good, we'll get the unpause and move forward. But Bacon, otherwise, are you really against this triple melee comp? You think it's going to be that hard for them to execute on? I, I think it definitely can cause problems. Uh, it's something that you know they've had to. De you know, we see triple melees, you know, have issues with in the past. But we are going to get the unpause coming through. Doesn't look like uh, set three is moving yet. Uh, it's unfortunate. Oh man, I knew fate would strike Taka Pickers down. I just didn't think As it would happen it like this. <laughs> As is tradition. Says, says, says <laughs> yeah, I just, I hate Taka so much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy too. Like even Taka get hit, getting hit with a nerf stick in this last uh, patch and still seeing a lot of players, seeing a lot of yep. bans, and people still making it happen. But I guess that's why the nerf stick came out. Like it was just incredibly strong. Yeah, it absolutely was. Uh, there's a, I mean, it's a reason for it, and but it doesn't seem to have really uh, done a whole lot thus far. Because, like you said, still seeing a lot of Taka getting picked. So, uh, for now, just going to be continuing to hang in there. He did reconnect, so at least that's all sorted out and taken care of. All sorted. All sorted out here. Corrupted Genius is going to keep him in fighting shape with the Polite Company, but Severy jumps right in with the kite. Into the Kaku. Madoshi is waiting for the Drifting Dark. It's two seconds away. He gets the Malice, the Verdict down. He's eating a lot of damage. He's going to boots into a better position. Drifting Dark's there. Malice, Verdict. It looks like Sethery is really having some troubles. And Comcast not working out the way he would have hoped on that one. Bacon, you've been there before. Yeah, definitely have. And uh, Kirazine BMF. Oh, oh, Lil Pat! Sorry to cut you off, dude. Uh, I mean, Lil Pat was <laughs> obviously connected. Yeah, Lil Pat definitely was and got taken out. So did uh, Azura Zine, as that's going to be two kills going on over to Radiant Arcana. 4-0 now to start things off. Uh, make an asterisk with a 3-0 next to it. But uh, either way, they've still gotten these kills, and it's amounted to now a, uh, a gold lead that's currently building about 1,500 gold in their favor. <sighs> Oh, this is a tough situation to be in right now. But, uh, you know what? It can be done. We saw uh, 2v3 win in Game 3 in the Best of 3 series earlier today. Of course, it was Europe. Anything can happen in Europe. <laughs> but it did happen nonetheless. Now, it looks like Sethery's back out on the map. Now, see, this could have been the long con, Bacon. See, they think hey. Taka's gone. You know, they're making rotations thinking Taka's not here, but now he is. And Samuel gets the Drifting Dark down, the Malice, the Verdict. The little Pat's not liking that. The Chitin forwarded from Sethery. Gets pretty good damage down, but where's my Roam? Oh, my Roam's trying to hold lane down, but he has no health. But I don't want to rotate to lane because I have no health. Sethery, this is not the position you wanted to be in here. A Chitin buys a little bit of time. The Blight Company pulls him back. Malice hits. Verdict not even needed. These guys are in complete control of the game. Probably a bit of misfortune and also a little bit of skill coming into, into play here. Yeah, and Sethry, you know, while, yeah, the disconnect was a factor, uh, still only has 6 CS to his name, so uh, definitely not going to be able to have really much of an impact on this game, uh, unfortunately, but it's looking like this should be Radiant Arcana, actually really just, I mean, it, it's, you never want to call a game five minutes in, but Radiant Arcana is definitely just kind of looking like the better that, team. That's, uh, see, it's untrue, because... I actually, quite early, I sometimes I like to call a game, like, first rotation, but it's just not <laughs> not what everybody else wants, you know? I, I suppose. But you like, typically you don't, ever, don't call don't a game that, within the first five minutes. Look, look I call the game, that, like, every 30 <laughs> seconds when I'm playing. I'm like, dude, we lost, and we won. And we lost, <laughs> and now we won. It's kind of the way Vainglory goes. You know, it kind of is, and that's why you normally don't call it, because you don't. most people don't want to have to constantly change their call. Mm. Uh, typically, if you get one call, and it get, has to get locked in at that moment. You cannot change it. Yeah. Emotions are a tricky thing to deal with. It appears that we have a pause again, Bacon. 
Yep, uh, another pause coming out, and uh, big pause here. Again, while we do, well, you know, all players are responsible for their own connections and all that. While oh, we do sir. have the ability to pause, we like to at least try and take advantage of that to ensure as fair and clean of a game as possible. Yeah, but yep. some players just can't be helped. Oh, yep. like Sodas, Sodas, no mercy. He's like, <laughs> oh, I see a talk, huh? <laughs> well, he lights him up. He's not gonna follow up on it. Let's see. Oh. Grizzine trying to, to go ahead and secure that. Seth, are you going to yeah. reconnect with half health and realize that, uh, well, maybe someone just let me live, but it's still not going to be the ideal situation for him. Yeah, but what a maybe a, a boost of morale for him to be like, hey, man, like, I'm maybe not going to completely lose this game. We're still here. I'm oh, still in this. Solar Storm not predicting the direction of the little pet. I mean, you had vision of them too. Like, that was kind of interesting that the Solar Storm was thrown so far off while they could see the Black Feather. Mm hmm. It's interesting indeed. What do you think about Celeste these days? I think Celeste is still a great late game carry. I, I have no problems with Celeste. Mm hmm. And, and this comp specifically makes sense to you? Uh, this comp in particular, you know, typically you want uh, a weapon power damage dealer, but I never disagree with picking up Samuel. Uh, it's, I think he's always a very strong pick that can be added into really any composition. So uh, the fact that it's with a Celeste really doesn't uh, bother me at all, actually. I, I think it's uh, it'll work just fine. I don't necessarily think it's ideal as Madoshi... Does go ahead and get over here. Claim the kill, but there's up in the lane. Yeah, Yugen and Sodas just going to town, getting the ace. All right, seems good, dude. You know what? I'll channel a little four court. Finn to win, huh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Finn to win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Finn, I, I, I said in Europe, I feel like Finn is still a top-tier carry. Or a top-tier roam. <laughs> in Europe, maybe you'd be right. I'm kidding, I love Europe. Don't feed into this. Uh, shots Eden fired. Nonsense. Shots fired. But, against the world. But <laughs> it's, uh, I, mean, I think Finn is still top-tier, but look at Yugen's Finn build. Oh, I'm I'm a big fan. No wonder he's chunking through. He's <laughs> like, hey, Arden. <laughs> Arden's like, it's okay. I'm just gonna vanguard my eyes. Okay. Well, we're looking at respawning. That's so much damage to an Arden. It's pretty good damage. It, it could be better. Triple I'd, crystal power. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool and all. I'd rather see just like crazy cooldown builds though myself. Whatever though. I mean, you can still get cooldown. You can uh, you can make this a. Thrown. Goodness. Well, Azurine is going to get the fountain off, but is still going to fall. Lil Pat's going to get put to sleep and immediately woken up. Where's the synergy, yeah. though? Let's I'm going to get there. Sleep, that like, could have been nice. Sleep, you know? Huh? I'm saying I, I hate when you like someone puts you when you get put to sleep and just immediately woken back up. Like if you're going to put me to sleep, let me stay sleeping. You know? Dude, you having flashbacks of kindergarten or something? <laughs> <laughs> Those are different times, man. <laughs> You understand what it's like. Oh my gosh, maybe, uh, well, maybe you triggered. <laughs> you understand what it's like right now. This is, this is, they're having a tough go of it. Yeah, that's right for now. sure. Uh, right now, Radiant Arcana, I mean, they're, they have like no energy left and they're still just kind of shoving into this third turret. Finn is still just throwing out damage like crazy. I mean, he has a infusion in the inventory that they've now had like a team fight and a half and they still haven't even popped. I like that. There it is. There it goes. <laughs> now right, now that the fights are pretty much over, let's go ahead and use this infusion. Yeah. Ah, the hook's coming up. Let's see if they're going to make it work here. There it goes. <laughs> Stun <Stunning. laughs> Oh my goodness. Little Pat just got deleted. A little padded. <laughs> well, this is a game. Gauntlet's down. Madoshi, he walks into the way, stunned up. Sethery, 
Using that Chitin and the x Ratsu to combo him down, but the Drifting Dark's actually making a pretty good damage on them. Oblivion, hey, take a little nap, but he is woken up immediately. Bacon wouldn't have liked that if Bacon was the Arden here. And so nope. this drops a little bit of Helio, but do you not realize they don't have much energy? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. You should have respected I mean, do one thing. Go or don't go. That whole yeah, thing. That's literally, thing. you were saying it earlier, you know, with a triple melee, you have to be decisive. <laughs> you have to go or not go. You can't, uh, you can't sit there and be indecisive. You can't you just kind of commit, but not really. It just doesn't work. No, we need full commitment at this point. Honestly. <sighs> Honestly, they need to just get an infusion and fight. Like, they need to just take a fight and, like, go all in on Celeste. Like, everybody, don't hesitate. Jump in. Go for Celeste. Go for Samuel second. And try to do something off that. Like, this is such a desperate situation to be in. It really is. And they just, again, well, here they go. Trying to jump in onto the Celeste. They are fighting three versus two. Radiant Arcana, uh, this was a bold play. Sodas should pay with his life. And this is going to be a little bounty gold going the other way. If Sodas does not die, he's a god. Sodas, our lord and savior. We bow before you. Lil Pat jumps in for the execute. He gets lit up because Sodas cannot be killed. Have we seen a Celeste god like this? Honorary before? mention, I believe, has to go to Yugen on that. Uh, Paul using that forced accord. Sodas was being chased by all three members, and the forced accord came out, pulled back both Lil Pat and Accurazine. I think that was uh, really what allowed Sodas to survive, and now they're just going to continue running rampant ace buff minions on the turrets. Madoshi is even toying with the idea of diving the sanctuary, but this game is all but over at this point. Yeah, not much to say here at the end. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna poke, a little bit of poking. They attempted to throw a radiant arcana, but they're not talented enough to make that happen at this point. <laughs> so this is gonna be all she wrote. Looks like they want to play with their food. Sethry will be going down here Stat momentarily. Oh, Celeste just getting like a 10, oh, and three. I mean, whatever. They're good scores, but 21 to zero. This was two versus three. Most that's what you would expect to happen unless we were playing Bacon. But um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we would have made it much closer. Yeah, we would have got at least one kill. If we were the team that was winning on the 2v3. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if, if we were on the team with If it was you, me, and someone closer. else, and someone on the opposing team disconnected, we would have made sure the game was a lot closer than it was here. I would have taken that moment to get myself a snack. Be like, all right, nice <laughs> to moving. I will stop eating my burrito and start playing. <laughs> Either way, yeah, that was uh, pretty much dominance all the way throughout. Sethry, again, unfortunate with the disconnect. And uh, just not really able to do anything from the point when they were able to reconnect. Yeah, that was yeah. really uh, the, well, that was the challenge. Didn't, didn't take the, the wind out of the sails of this mm -hmm. team here. Maybe they can come back, come back strong. Yeah, maybe. It's unfortunate because he had a lot of connection issues. We did pause twice, but it seemed like his game was crashing multiple times throughout that stream. We got word from him. Tried to work with him. We'll see if they can do better in game number two, though. I mean, it looked like they drafted well enough, uh, but, you know, once it got so one-sided, uh, there was very little uh, that that uh, they could do, really. This guy got stuck behind the snowball and a very strong Celeste and Samuel. And, uh, you know, we saw, again, the Celeste just able to handle a 2v3 uh, without any issues whatsoever. So uh, we're going to switch these players here real quick and then start the second match right away. As it looks like uh, uh, everybody's ready to go. And, again, we're in round number two, and we're going to definitely play a few of these rounds here. But we're going to get right into draft number two of this matchup here. And so Tasty Bacon and Humanist, uh, you guys take it away here as we get into game number two of this matchup. All right. Thank you very much, Dragonborn. We did it. We had a successful handoff over here. Kestrel, the first band, followed up by Lance out of Raiden Arcana. Yeah, that's going to be uh, pretty common bands, I think, throughout for quite some time. Yeah, it's been pretty common. Let's see how uh, they want to go ahead and set the tempo of this game. Starting off with the Catherine would be an interesting choice here. 
It definitely will be. Uh, you know, I guess wanting to be able to deal with a another potential double crystal comp. I feel like they're gonna go carry Catherine. I would certainly hope not. I think they need to do something. They need to do something, but I don't think that's the right thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> having a plan is uh, is the first step. It's gonna be Blackfeather coming out here. So uh, Blackfeather Arden, obviously, very strong. What are they gonna do into this alpha? Um, not entirely sure. Alpha could work here, and it will be the alpha. So we'll get to see uh, this one come out. I feel like Alpha Catherine should get dumped on by the Arden Blackfeather, at least for a little bit there, depending, unless that's not going to be the combo that they're paired up with. They could probably run a Nozo into this team, especially with those connection issues, but... Woo! Uh, okay! Well, I guess uh, they wanted to try and uh, appease the humanist Ozo God. I needed appeasing, honestly. After game one, I appreciate this, so we're going to see Madoshi uh, ready to uh, light some fools up here. And it's pretty, pretty good. I like Arden with Ozo. I think it does enable him pretty well. My guess is we see the CP Ozo with the weapon Black Feather combo, and that should uh, do pretty well here. Yeah, definitely could do pretty well. Uh, uh, it's kind of strange to see another triple melee comp, this time for the team that just beat the triple melee comp, but hopefully Sethery is able to stay connected for this game. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree with you. I also think that, I mean, there were other problems. It did feel like they were outclassed in the lane as well, so this mm -hmm. was finding a bunch of solo kills. Um, and uh, it's going to be very tough for Ringo. Like, the thing is, I think... Specifically, I've been spamming this Ringo out a lot recently, and whenever there's a Black Feather, a, a Taka, a Glaive, it's just like dread because th those gap closers that have high burst potential just devastate mm -hmm. a Ringo. Yeah, they absolutely do. I mean, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they try and deal with that. Little Pat going to be, uh, you know, obviously a high priority target, but already you'd see Radiant Arcana looking to make aggressive moves into the jungle. Oh, they're going to make these moves right now. He's got the Acro Bounce. One, two, three. He's on the Seth Ring. Little three ring circus right here. You can backing him up. They're going to flip it around onto Catherine. Find that kill. Now they're going to keep Medoshi alive for a second. A Seth three did get him pretty low. Actually, dangerous situations. Acro Bounce onto a homie, and you're down. That was a mistake. That's why people don't play Ozo, especially in competitive play right here. Seth three getting in a dangerous position, but does... Go ahead and get that infinite reboot. Yugen going toe to toe. Is Yugen gonna find this? Uh, doesn't have. A, oh man, tough. But Sethry actually getting a kill. Great for them. Yeah, absolutely is great for them, and we'll see. As uh, it is gonna make it two to one in favor of T down, and that's gonna be uh, a significantly better start than game number one, largely because you know they have all three members playing. So that alone is a better start. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, of course it is. What do you think about the the Storm Crown Ozo? Well, hold on, Sodas is lighting up Lil Pat. Lil Pat actually doing a very good job. He activates the boot, stays on him, on point, out of Sodas. Why is a little time? I don't think Lil Pat should have hesitated. Oh, he doesn't get the kill, Lil Pat. I don't, I don't know about that one. Yeah, that was uh, definitely curious, but so close to the kill, not quite able to secure it. But Sodas. Be careful, if you're going to go back in there, you're still very, very low. However, uh, is yeah, healing yeah. up thanks to that Book of Eulogies? It's so good. Book it of really Eulogies is, is just godly. Especially for melee heroes, like, it's just incredible. Yeah, and, and the, what is Catherine going to do? You know, are you going to stun into an Achilles and get a couple basics out? Because you leave that Ringo so vulnerable, they have to respect this. Yeah, you absolutely do. And so, with uh, Yugen going to be still playing very aggressively, now has to Vanguard out. Then Sodas takes his turn to jump in. And you know, again, when you're triple, oh. melee, wow, that was was not expecting that one. <laughs> Sethray still looks pretty healthy too, so uh, <clears throat> that's why people don't play Ozo. Yeah, for sure, man.
So I mean, don't know even what to tell you on that one right there. Yeah, it's uh, just feels bad, man. Feels quite bad, man. Well, I mean, so there have been some mistakes made. Let's be real about it. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to have uh, Aftershock uh, Ozo coming out as his uh, first item. He's got a little bit of armor as well. And, of course, the Swift Shooter just to help him with some uh, attack speed. I don't I don't think Swift Shooter is actually necessary. And uh, this is a godly scout trap, though. They're scouting out Radiant Arcana, so a nice job by Triggers Down to get that uh, that scout trap over there, giving a lot of information. I just, I, man, I wish the Sozo would just go on Stormcrown. <laughs> well, you gotta spread the word about going Stormcrown Ozo. Make it happen tomorrow. Um, huh? maybe we'll have to do it. Uh, it's gonna be Cedri getting uh, put down into that. Accurizine is there with the stun, buys just enough time. Cedri's back up, Prime Directive, finding a little damage. Windoshi has to dip out towards the southwest. And the Sethry right back onto him. He gets the Vanguard, the Aqua Bounce. Boom, nice plays. That's how you want to do it right there. Stun does go on to Madoshi, but should be Akirazine making his way out. Unless Sodas has made his rotation down, in which he has. The Fane of Heart with the on point. And rest in peace, Katharino. Radiant Arcana making the nice plays there. Yeah, it really is. Some uh, some great plays. Getting them even on the kills once again. Stealing away this jungle. Now Sethry going back in. I think thinks better of the 2v1, but is still debating with the ideas. But it looks like Radiant Arcana are going to be backing out. Seth Reed, you got to be careful. No, he's not bouncing well. See, Madoshi bounced on his ally, then on the enemy. It's like, okay, seems good, man. Ozo is dead, and this is going to be low pat with the rotation in just to get the kill. Now, this is a different story than game one. Not, I mean, you said just having three players it's going to be a different game you're right but it feels like they're also playing this a little bit differently yeah it definitely feels like radiant arcana not playing as cleanly um maybe that you know, that ever so present uh issue of overconfidence coming out yep feels pumpkin man feels pumpkin man feels pumpkin man madoshi is gonna face check a little Bush face checking. Akirazine says, you're just a stack on my passive at this point, Ozo. He gets the bounce forward. Ringo's the target he wants, but you gotta be careful, dude. You're only level five. <laughs> he says, hey, Sodas, and then there's this little lane tax, which is proper. You make the rotation lane, you get a little lane tax. Yeah, uh, you get a little bit of lane tax, get a little bit extra farm. Never hurt nobody. However, uh, it is that what? double <laughs> weapon composition. I'm not sure what... Nice. So Radiant Arcana, they have a chance. Well, they would just build a whole mess of armor, which is exactly what Sodis is already working on. Yugen yeah. did finish off the Fountain of Renewal. This is a team that actually would excel very well by stacking armor. So I think this is going to be just mm -hmm. fine for them. Yeah, they actually would. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if they just continue down that path. You see a little bit of armor for Ozo. I'd expect uh, Yugen to have a second item Atlas Pauldron. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely concur with you on that one. Just just getting those Atlas out, stacking some armor, it's going to do wonders for them. Oh, I, I definitely, it puts uh, uh, triggers down on a, uh, a bit of a timer here. What what point would you say they need to close this game out by? Uh, I don't really know if there is necessarily a timer that you need to close it out by. Um, it's... Because it all depends on how Radiant Arcana builds and how they actually play. If they group up and start, you know, going after single targets, Gauntlet gonna come out though. Here comes the Bangarang getting knocked Little Pat back. Yeah, call Skrillex. Bangarang is coming through. Little Pat uses the Ringo run, <laughs> running back to my team, but I'm dead now. Well, it seems uh, seems bad for him. Little Pat is dead. Merciless Pursuit. Cat's trying to get out of here. She is dead. Sethry has to activate that termination protocol. That's going to be him three versus one under his own turret. A double kill for the Arden. Bacon's got to be happy about that one. And Raiden Arcana just taking a strong uh, uh, take way right back into this game. Like they were they were down in net worth. The kills were not going their favorite. And suddenly everything is right back to even. Yeah, well, it's like you said, with a triple melee comp, you have to just go aggressive. You have to go, you know, all at once onto a single target. That's exactly what they did. Sodas is going to be the target of this Hellfire Brew. 
will get taken down. But you went and got the turret for it, and his team also took the gold mine. So a lot of gold going over in trade for that one kill. Absolutely worth it. Really surprised Yugen's going for the Crucible as the second item. As uh, you know, yeah, Crucibling the Catherine ult is really important, but I feel like. Uh, with the builds that are coming out from Lil Pat and Sethry, the Atlas Pauldron should have been a much higher priority. Uh, I hear what you're saying, but his teammates, I mean, they can just stack armor themselves, work around that. I'm, I'm going to go with the Yugen on this one. I agree. I think the Crucible is very important for them as a team. Well, speaking of single par targets, how about Sotus 1v2ing for a little bit there up in the lane and actually coming out on top? No, Sodas is just tapping. It's Blackfeather that's doing the 2 v one -ing. This is Blackfeather. I mean, Blackfeather's been doing work recently, and people have been really taking advantage of that kit. It's nice to see. Of course, Sodas has been playing well, so we'll give him credit. I'm just just kidding. The Radiant Arcana feels like they're ready to fight. Madoshi's just kind of lurking around the backside. He's going to head up. That's a bang ring right there. Nice, easy block. Seems good, but the Gauntlet to follow, that's the combo they want. Aqua Bounce is going to get one, two bounces. They don't want to go under the turret. So looks like that's going to be aggression canceled off and maybe for triggers down a moment where they can breathe or fight with ease because a couple big ults are down. Now they are going to be you know, trying to return some damage here but I actually would really like to see that combo done in the opposite uh, order. Have the gauntlet go down first and then the bangerang because if <laughs> they use their reflex blocks on the gauntlet which there's only one reflex block when it's on little pat I think that absolutely needs to change. But yeah. uh, if the reflex block is used on the gauntlet, you can then hit the bang rang and knock them back into the gauntlet. So then they have to walk through the gauntlet again and they don't have the reflex block anymore. Yeah. So they just got bang ranged and then they're going to get stunned again too. Yep. I agree with you, man. I think that would be the best way that they could play it out right now. Of course, these guys, uh, you know, they'll, they will learn about that in two minutes. That's the stream delay. So <laughs> they're not stream sniping. People don't do that. Sodas, Yugen, and Madoshi. What's what's the play here? Sodas is going to jump forward as Accuracy and goes in for that stun. Madoshi, Yugen getting a little poke out, but the Storm Guard comes up from Catherine like quills on a porcupine. And that's going to be Radiant Arcana right back into the jungle. Assume they want to do some shopping, maybe get a gold mine after this. Yeah, could very well be looking for that gold mine, get that extra gold in their pockets. Uh, let's see if uh, you're gonna see some blocks with this crucible on Catherine Ole now that he's bought it Kirazine's getting lit up right here Does make it back to safety without having to sell fountain. So that's very important for his team Yeah, absolutely is uh, you know, Being able to still hold on to that cooldown for if there's another engagement from Radiant Arcana uh, As they are gonna be going in reflex block they again go bang right into gauntlet this time it finds them a kill I mean, at least they're doing it together. Like, it might not be the way we actually want them to do it, but they're working as a team. Double kill for Blackfeather. They're going to go for a Kyrazine. I think this is a dangerous move. <laughs> oh, the Crucible has been burned. The Blast Trimmer, I, I guess, seems good. I, I mean, he's trying to make the plays, but there's just really nowhere to run. Look at this. Radar Arcana actually making some uh, semi-coordinated plays here. It's nice to see. Tardagro is going to go over to Sodas Madoshi. looks to teleport out, but um, okay. That's going to be canceled off right there. <laughs> he should have let him bounce onto the... Oh, why didn't he bounce onto the Black Feather over the... I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I think this is my favorite thing about having teams pick Black Feather or uh, pick Ozo. It's just listening to you critique the Ozo. No, I'm just we're talking about being like like if if Arden was sitting there solo and he had an ally on the side and he tries to teleport out instead of vanguarding to his ally, I'd probably have a mild stroke as well. <laughs> but it's right? funnier when it's Ozo. It, it's, but it's just, uh, is it? Little Pat, man, dude, you need to get out of here. That's that's not even cool. Get back. They are able to get the kill on the side three. So Raid Arcana continuing to establish dominance here in this series, although much different story than the last game. Yeah, well, you know, you asked, uh, you know, is, is there a time frame for uh, for them to pick up the victory here before the armor starts to really just stack up and become too much? Uh, I'm gonna say that was at about ten minutes. Ten minutes. So, like, three minutes ago. <laughs> they would have had to win by that point mm -hmm. before the armor stacking from Radiant Arcana became too much to deal with. Because it definitely seems like Radiant Arcana are just too much for 
uh, trigger down to deal with at this mm, point in the game. Can't handle it. <sighs> well, this is why he should have gone CP, Ringo, if I'm being honest about it. Very well, uh, maybe could, should have been. <laughs> and watch a little Pat go ham and just triple kill them right now. <laughs> Scout traps are out. It's uh, Kyrzine with that Merciless Pursuit forward. Stun's gonna be blocked off by Ozo. Madoshi making the plays, the Bang Rang forward. It's gonna be blocked onto Lil Pat as he knocks out three to the side. Acro bounce, one, two, three. The Blast Trimmer does come through. Lands, but Lil Pat still will go down. Sethery's gonna activate the Termination Protocol. I don't think that actually went off. He's chopped down. Kyrzine's on the run. This is gonna be an ace going the way of Radiant Arcana. I mean, not much to say. They, there was just a clean fight. They're engaging. They're making it happen. Yeah, they absolutely are. I mean, clean fights and clean kills coming through. Radiant Arcana, they're going to go ahead, take this last gold mine before Kraken spawns. You got Sodas working on the turret as well with a horde of ace buff minions at his back. So that's going to be the third and final lane turret getting destroyed. Gold mine going over means this gold lead is now up over 5,000 in favor of Radiant Arcana. And well, this should just be a clean route to the finish. We're 30 seconds away from the Kraken spawning. They may not even need the Kraken, but at this point, you might as well just wait for it and just go ahead and take the Kraken. Like, I'm legit not even sure how this comp is supposed to work for triggers down. I mean, there's I, I could explain, like, how... Ideally, now that you have these heroes picked, it should work together. Mm -hmm. But you understand, like, Alpha needs to close the gap onto target. Catherine would benefit from being up in that area, but she needs to peel for Ringo because they're closing the gap immediately. As soon as Ringo gets in within basic attack range, like Black Feathers on him, he's getting bang ranged or an acro balance or a uh, gauntlet's going down. Like, there's nowhere they can actually fight, and Black Feather just takes this Alpha down. This is very easy kill for him there. And with that, they can do whatever they want. Kraken, continue to push, choke them out on the map, fake a teleport, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's uh, they absolutely can kind of do whatever they want right now. They're going to be coming over the wall looking for a fight. Well, that's going to be the reflex uh, burned right there. Lil Pat is down. The gauntlet is as well. So this is going to kite backwards. Look at that three-man blast trimmer. He stacks on his passive at this point. A Kyrazine. 3v1 plus a turret. He's going to live through this. Oh. Okay, seems good. He goes down. Well, Sethery is up and uh, is going to be able to get maybe something. So does, that's not your healing platform. Uh, maybe they just want to do some work on this turret for a second. Acro bounce back and forth. This should be ending soon. No, they're going to go in back out of here. Yeah, one turret still left standing. They don't want to uh, worry about throwing here. So Midoshi is just gonna get to the uh, safe corner and recall back to base you know, they they gave up a couple kills there that maybe shouldn't have again i feel like when they you know kraken spawned they as a team should have just all gone for the kraken and you, you either take it or you force the enemy team to come and try and fight you and you had been winning every other fight that had been out in the open so why not look for a fight there but instead, they try and push in. They do get one turret out of it, and they do still have definite control over the game. But uh, like I said, could have been a much cleaner finish to this one. Could have been indeed. But that wasn't a clean finish. And, um, well, these guys, hopefully they can shake that off, come back strong here. Maybe it's uh, triggers down. They're going to have that morale boost and come back. Show us that godly comeback victory here. I don't, I don't know, Bacon. Yeah, well, it's it would be a long shot for uh, Trigger Down to make the comeback happen in this game. Uh, it's definitely a not an easy task, as they are perhaps going to get engaged upon here. Yeah, Sodas taking a lot of damage. Oh, Sodas is dead. Uh, okay, that's... Yeah. Uh, Hashtag, where's my room? <laughs> yeah, where's my room? Breaking point. A lot of stacks on this uh, on this Ringo. He's got the bone sock going to town here. Lil Pat needs to kite backwards. He's almost dead. One more shot. Yeah, there you go. This is Madoshi on this Ozo. Doing work here. A little, little acro bounceage and three ring circus action. Termination protocol. Need to get backwards. It's not going to land. It's not going to land. There's your acro bouncer. They're going to try and burst him down. Uh, CP Ringo's not too good at bursting down the alpha during the infinite reboot, but should be able to get the kill at the end of this. Acrobances are coming through. Ozo gets kill. 
Now accuracy on the run. Lil Pat still not even close to respawning. This should be the A's here in just one second. Is Stormguard gonna be activated? Maybe at the last moment. Still, that's the ace, and uh, this has got to be GG. Yeah, especially with the size of the minion wave that was already in the base. The turret's going to go down. Little Pat can try and do what he can to stall this one out, but it's just not going to be enough. The minions alone would nearly be enough to finish this one. Yugen going very deep into the sanctuary, but still staying alive. Acro bounce. Now, Madoshi might fall here, but there's still a horde of ace buff minions. They may actually be able to stall this one out for a little bit longer. Because, uh, you know, I think that Sanctuary dive was mm. a little too arrogant. Yeah, I actually hope that Radiant Arcana lose the entire series. <laughs> wow. I mean, there's no reason to do that. Like, you know, in the game, don't play with your food, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, we're here, we're in a tournament setting, we're, we're casting your game, there's other games that need to be cast. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Okay. I watched a lot of throwy things today. And uh, I, I don't need to watch fountain dives to prolong a game that was over. Yeah, especially, you know, Midoshi could have just sat on the crystal, uh, you know, attacking the crystal and just had... Even, I understand, like, you want to get the ace just to really secure it, or not, they already had the ace, but, you know, get that extra kill to completely secure it, not allow Ringo to try and, you know, make the comeback happen, but, you know, just have one person delay the Ringo. And just have Arden just sit there and, you know, body block the Ringo. If he tries to come out, then put damage on him. When he f goes back, just go back onto the crystal with the minions. That's all they really had to do. But they are going to go ahead to start up the Kraken. This should bring triggers down in it to uh, see what's going on. Stuff here. Accuracy and straightforward right in the front. Madoshi is going to be stunned up. Little Pat, that's not where you want to be. I mean, you're going to boot and try to get into a better position, but... You know, rest in peace right there. Set 3, trying to get some good damage down, but he's getting chunked down. Uh, he's not gonna survive this infinite reboot. Look at that execution out of Sodus right there, and Akirazine just about to accept his fate as the triple kill comes through for Black Feather. GG. Well, I have called GGG -G -G like three times, so there's a good <laughs> chance they might throw themselves on the healing platform and see if it works again. Well, with nobody alive to throw themselves onto, it doesn't look like they're going to. Well, maybe uh, Madoshi will. Yep, Madoshi's gonna go ahead and give a kill over to the fountain, but. It is GG in favor of Radiant Arcana, as they do. It took them far, 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 far longer than it should have, but they do close the series out. It's over. It's over. All right, it's done. Save us. <laughs> Man, that was... Uh... A very fun, exciting series, I guess, would be the way to put it, uh, as politely as I could. I mean, you know, we, we when you get these teams, these are all young teams kind of rising up here through the ranks. And some of them, you know, they had connection issues early. That was definitely a big factor for game number one. But game number two, man, I mean, Radiant Arcana had it in the bag. You guys were talking about it. It was like, it should have been GG. What is it, 15 minutes? Um, no, maybe like 15 and a half after that first crack and and um or after kraken spawns uh and yet they still didn't close it out um interesting points just to point out there is the fact that um it was kind of close early uh looked like uh like a completely different game like for the first um first five or ten minutes but then it just really went in favor of radiant arcana um ozo was getting lit up in the jungle but then magically was able to start like performing and i think a lot of it had to do with the support play i mean arden uh, really kept his team alive. Did a great job with the Ozo. Uh, it just seems like Ozo can heal really well. Um, if you give him a nice Vanguard, uh, he can uh, stay in those fights, give a little bit of longevity. And that really did the trick. I mean, even against an Alpha, uh, he was outlasting that Alpha every time. All right, well, we are going to be getting ready for the next matchup. We are still in round two, and uh, the next matchup comes out of round two as uh, Nemesis Titan. Uh, their first round was a forfeit from the other team, so they moved right on to round two right away, and they've been waiting patiently as the matchup that they've been waiting for went to game number three, but it is now Team Regulators. So when we come back, we'll be getting you guys into that game momentarily. Don't go anywhere.
$14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. Welcome back, everybody. As we get ready for the next matchup tonight, it is going to be uh, Team Nemesis Titan going up against uh, Team Regulators. Nemesis Titan, man, they have been through it all. Making it into the Evil Eight for this first split and then falling right back down here in the Challenger Series. I'm here joined by Tasty Bacon and Humanist. And Humanist, you know, we, uh, we've we been uh, gotten to see a lot of this Nemesis Titan team. They've definitely showed glimmers of real um, spark here, uh, but unfortunately falling down the challenge battles. Now they have a slightly different roster than what we saw in Evil 8, and one of the new additions is Super Shot. Uh, have you gotten to see him play a lot? Any thoughts initially just from what you've seen? Oh, we, uh, Humanist not here right now at this moment, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, so tasty bacon. I don't know if you uh, <laughs> want to pick up where <laughs> where I left off. Uh, what was the question again? Just oh, uh, we were just talking about Nemesis Titan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they uh, they definitely had struggles in Evil Eight, but they kind of switched up their rosters a little bit right before uh, the challenge battles. Definitely had some success there as they did make it into the second day of Evil Eight for that last week. weren't able to pick up any points, but this roster definitely. A little bit stronger. I'd actually say stronger than what they had initially in Evil 8. So now they come down here to the challenge battles. One of the new additions is Super Shot. Haven't seen him play a whole lot. Just some of your thoughts of what you've seen him play so far. How you think he's going to perform tonight? I actually haven't seen Super Shot play for quite some time. Uh, I remember it was a name that was around way back uh, in the earlier days of the competitive Vainglory. So you know, he is a name that has been around. But I haven't really been able to see uh, anything that he's done recently. So I don't, unfortunately, really don't have too much insight as to that. He was, um, he was a part of, I believe, one of the, some of the original uh, Von C and with Von C in the Von Menace roster. Uh, he was definitely a part of that group. Uh, so he's been around for a long time. And uh, you're right, it's just been some time since we've seen him kind of on a major roster here. So Nemesis Titan's definitely a brand uh, to watch as, um, you know, they have uh, they've been around for a long time. So it looks like uh, we've got this matchup almost ready to go as soon as Humanist comes back. I think he's here now, Humanist. Welcome back. Maybe. I think we've got just a few more minutes. He might be uh, taking a quick break. Uh, I think he might be uh, munching on a burrito. <laughs> you say That's something about guess. a burrito? <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, guys, we are going to kick it over to you and Tasty Bacon. Humanist, thanks for coming back finally. As we get ready for this, this is a matchup that I think should Man. be... A a lot First more exciting. First he gets your name wrong, then he doesn't say your name, and then he throws shade at you when he does say it. What did you do to Dragonborn? I called him out on his hosting, and I'll, uh, <laughs> I did it in private. I thought if I didn't publicly blast him across Twitter and every other social media outlet, he would take it easy on me. But apparently, he's holding the grudge. <laughs> no, no, we are we are good to go. Humanist, thank you so much. And uh, with that, uh, I think the draft started actually. So I'm going to kick it over to you guys to get started with that. All right. Well, we are going to be getting underway. It is Nemesis Titan taking on Team Regulators. Nemesis Titan, again, the number one seed coming in here. A very strong team. You know, just got knocked out of the uh, Evil Eight, unfortunately, and looking to make their way back in. They're going to have to go up against a Samuel Lyra combo. Samuel Lyra combo. That's pretty good right there. That's a lot of sustain. That's a ton of sustain and a whole lot of harass as well. <laughs> that definitely is. But you're talking about Nemesis Titan here, right? You know, these guys are players at the, at the highest level. They can. They're players at the highest level. 
Hey, they have <laughs> tasted glory, and they want to get back there. Well, they are going to be looking to do so, as uh, Dragonborn is mentioning, with an updated roster. It is Dragon Dagger, Chicken, and Super Shot. Yeah. Um, local Puerto Rican, Gatsby, and Halcyon Havoc apparently also on that roster. So that's a pretty stacked roster. And, uh, what is this? Uh, it's I didn't. I'm just pulling it up right now. Team Regulators versus Nemesis Okay, so we're good. Prepare Team Regulators. Black Feather, I think, should do okay here. Um, as far as these two comps, do you have a favorite? Uh, I, if we just go compositionally, purely off the composition, I really like the composition regulators have. Uh, I feel like that's a extremely strong composition in the current meta. Uh, whereas the side of Nemesis, I feel like there's, you know, it's very strong early game, but both Glaive and uh, Lance run the risk of falling off heavily if they do not get a big lead. They fall However, off in their ability to do damage. Yes. But their ability to CC is still there. For the for the Lance, at least. Glaive has, you know, the one afterburn and then can't really do much. Unless, unless I see that cooldown yeah, coming but... out. That, that, uh, that uh, aftershock. <laughs> aftershock, uh... After, after like shock clock tension, work, or he could just go into tension crown. Yeah, tension crown could can... work as well. But again, like early on, the damage if, if they can snowball a large lead, then late game the damage is still immense. Like you can still just devastate people with a full crit build on a glaive. But we'll have to see what they do decide to go with. As right now, we're gonna have a skirmish. Yeah, two man impale here, dragon dagger, doing it well. And he's going to be on the run. There's a Githian wall. We're going to be buying him some time. But Team Regulators taking first blood right off the bat here. And they got to be happy about that. Absolutely got to be happy with that. Anytime you can get first blood on the first rotation. You said you like to call games right on the first rotation. So it's... Uh... Yeah, I mean, Nemesis, they've lost. Like, I, how do you come <laughs> back from this? No, they're winning. They are winning again. Do you see? He got his back. He got two backs. How could Team Regulators possibly come back from... <laughs> this sort of devastation in this moment, they back off together. Both the Lyra and Blackfeather will hold hands as they attempt to take the mid. Flare comes out. The back Treant should be picked up by Chicken Kaka. This mid should be taken down. Yes, it will, but the two-man root into the two-man Githian wall coming out. Dragon Dagger's pretty on point with this Lance thus far. Speaking of on point, one comes out of King Kov on the uh, hasty retreat from him and his Lyra. But they do take the mid. They get away successfully. Yep, they take the mid, they get away successfully, they still have the only kill on the board as well. So you you got that mental advantage off of that. However, Dragon Dagger with the Lance takes a little poke and gets himself the tree end. Yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty fun and uh, also fairly easy to do with the Lance uh, compared to many different heroes now. Zardy is being lit up right here. Lyra, well, you're pretty quick, but Chicken Kaka with the afterburn forward, and they're going to chunk through King Kov's Black Feather. This is a bad time right here, because maybe Zardy gets lucky now. I'm not even going to attempt it. The back treant is going to be cleaned up right here. And Nemesis Titan, they are, you know, they lost the game, and now they have won the game. This is, like, when you, you take away these, uh, these healers, it just allows you to continue the snowball. Yeah, well, Savage Alpaca, excellent name, I do just want to say, uh, is going to be looking to continue this farm. Has fallen behind already, Super Shot, by 10 CS. Uh, definitely not where you want to be in the early game, considering like there's only been one like rotation where Savage Alpaca left the lane, yeah. and that alone is not enough to make you fall behind by 10 CS. So he's just getting straight up out-farmed in the lane by Super Shot. I mean, Super Shot's no scrub, man, and uh, Celeste is his jam, so I'm sure he's quite happy that the Celeste uh, came through for the draft, and he's making it work as well, so it's nice to see. Uh, you know, of course, Nemesis uh, Titan here, like, th this is a team, the, uh, yes, they fell from glory, but it's always nice to see a, a new a new team rising up, but it's nice to see a team, you know, given a second chance and uh, make something happen out of it. Yeah, it really is, and now Savage Alpaca going to be trying to go in with those Malice and Verdicts. Not really getting enough damage to uh, cause any serious threat to Nemesis for now. So they are just going to be going back down to the jungle where King Gob is going to find Chicken. 
Yeah, Chekhov's gone toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Twisted Stroke was used immediately. Kinkov taking some damage, but the on-point and just sticking there should be enough for him to take advantage. This is going to be really close. The Afterburn comes through. They do get the kill right at the end. Nice combo by Chicken Kaka and well played with the Malice. The Verdict, one basic should be enough. Savage Alpaca is not going to be in range, but the Malice and Verdict, here it is. No, it's off the mark, but it puts him in range for a basic, but he's healed up just oh. enough that it's not going to kill him. Drifting Dark, he doesn't have, he doesn't have energy the Verdict. <laughs> Oh, Child Chicken Kaka is very good. Oh, I say that. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> but I don't mean it. <laughs> no, only a, a real, real good player would have attempted that. So credit for uh, taking the chance there. <laughs> oh, always <laughs> great to see someone get taken down by the minions. I believe we actually had that in the Evil 8 as well. Um, I mean, it was the minions, but like, let's give credit to Samuel. He did a. Well, I'm talking like it was even worse <laughs> in the Evil Eight. Like in the Evil Eight, it was at the start of the game. Yeah. The kill didn't even get attributed to anybody because nobody else did damage. I believe it was. Uh, wasn't it? I love Joseph on the crawl that it happened to. Joseph would never do such a thing. I think it was. I'm pretty no, sure I it was Love Joseph playing crawl, and he died to the back minions on like at the start of the game. Look, like, if you never died to minions, <laughs> you're playing the game wrong. Like, you at some point you have to, you're pushing the limit so far. That <laughs> Not you, at the start of the game. You learn where the edge exactly <laughs> is. You know, look, I live on the edge of tilt, and that, that wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, that I had to cross that line many times. You still do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know when it's happening. It's not a surprise. I'm not like people are like you're tilted. I'm no, I'm not. I'm like yeah, I am tilted right now. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm aware of that fact. Oh boy. Well, either way, it is going to be regulators falling behind pretty heavily in gold, and the kills really don't have anything to do with that. It's just entirely on the farm and the fact that super shot now up by uh, almost over 20 CS. Azardi couldn't get engaged on, but some good damage being returned until that core collapse came out. Yeah, core collapse. The afterburn. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Savage Alpaca. I thought he was going down. But uh, they're just not able to combo up effectively enough. And uh, no kill there. King Kov, he sees some low Nemesis Titan members. Trades a couple blows with Rose defensive over the wall back into a safer position. But this is going to be Nemesis rotating as a team down to the jungle shop. Breaking point. Picked up for this glaive off the bat. That's gonna be the fountain for Lyra. Uh, what do you what do you think of this breaking point? I'm kind of surprised by breaking point first item for a glaive. Typically, you see uh, either the sorrow blade or you know, sometimes you've seen tension bow first for glaive. Uh, but it's usually wanting to get the flat damage as opposed to the ramp up damage or the crits that want to come out too. So. Uh, definitely not a conventional build to start with the breaking point, but it can definitely work. Uh, I feel like Glaive is a little bit more of a hit and run character than you would want for this kind of early stacking, but uh, you know we'll see what like Chicken's able to do with it. Here, or there, or if this is just for build. And, I mean, he's fighting a team that does have sustain and and the mm -hmm. Black Feather, the Lyra, the Samuel. I mean, even right there, the Afterburn, and he's not going to get the knockback the direction he wanted. Kinkov. He should be able to get out of here. The fronts are going to go the way of Nemesis Titan, Dragon Dagger, Chicken Kaka. Happy to take that. The Super Shot is not going to have the easiest rotation back to the lane. But it looks like they're actually going to start up this gold mine. Nope, yeah. canceled that off. <laughs> yeah, they uh, decided better on the gold mine. Hasn't decided better on this, though. Gold mine still wants some blood. Throwing out lots of attacks, actually, at the end there. But is it going to be the uh, full disengage? The full disengage. Seems good. Oh, Savage all back. He takes some damage, but he gets healed up by the Sigil and a Corrupted Genius. He's right back in fighting shape. Getting those last hits under turret. Well done, sir. Oh, he's got to get him somewhere because he's falling further and further behind Super Shot. 87 to 61 on the laners. Even in the jungle, it's 58 to 40. So that's why, they're even though we're tied two kills apiece, there's a Two, almost 3,000 gold lead going over in favor of Nemesis right now. And well, now with this gold mine going to be started up again if they actually commit to it, which they are not. There are some <laughs> commitment issues here on this team. 
And then that, that starts to make me question, like, how far do you go in the tournament? Like, if you're making these, like, constantly questioning decisions, then someone's not making the shot calls, or someone's not listening to the shot calls that are being made. Yeah, no, it's definitely something that should be needs to be a concern for them. Maybe not so much in this series, but definitely going forward is uh, a question mark that is going to be well, I mean, need let's an answer. Not, let's not just give it away and say that they're moving forward here. Like, you make some mistakes, you do things like that over and over and over, and I uh, can come back to bite well, you. Well, it is winner's bracket, so they are going to be moving forward at some point. Like, no matter <laughs> what, they're going to have at least one more game. Okay, seems good. Chicken Kaka finds the kill on King Cobb solo in the jungle. He's going to afterburn. Nox is already backwards. Savage Alpaca is low, but the Fountain, the Corrupted Genius, he's kiting backwards with the Drifting Dark, but Dragon... And there's too much Lance to handle there for the Samuel. He goes down, and Nemesis, and they get two kills, and they're going to be able to pressure this turret and take away the jungle. Yep, turret is going to go down, unless Super Shot's just going to leave because he runs out of energy. Okay, never mind. That is going to be Super Shot now, perhaps going... Nope, never mind. Team comes over the wall. That's got to feel good to be like... Team, I'm in trouble, and then all of a sudden your roamer and your jungler come flying over a wall to help save you. They're like, leave me, I've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. We'll tell well, you when you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Chicken Kaka, I mean, you mentioned his farm before. I gotta agree with you, this is some pretty stellar farming. Yeah, and it's... The fact that it's being done without really... A lot of fights happening. Uh, those that last engagement, you know, got double the kills that they had all game, and it's they haven't been you know getting the kills and then stealing the farm away. It's just been flat out farming better than their opponents. Yeah, pretty much straight up. Look at Dragon Dagger with the impale into the Githian wall backwards. The drifting dark was nicely placed by Savage Alpaca allows them to get out of that pretty much scot free. And uh, well, team regulators, they're gonna go ahead and. Get a heal out of that sigil, look to uh, regroup, and maybe go back in here. But I think I feel like Nemesis Titan are definitely just baiting them, sitting on low health but holding that fountain. Chicken Kaka, he finds a target. King Kov, he's stunned up against the wall, rose defensive backwards. That's the fountain out of Team Regulators, but fountain still being held for Nemesis. There you go. It's going to be burned down. Zardi feels like he will go down here. The Oblivion's off the mark. Oh no, that's not the one you wanted, Savage. And King Kov just poking with on point. He's like, I mean, talk about commitment issues. Like, King Kong is like, ah, I, I don't really want to go in there. Not, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, my on point. I mean, that's not really a commitment issue. He's committing to not going into that fight. Yeah, it's true. He's committed to not committing. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, but has the, bro the breaking point first item on the Black Feather as well. Also a bit of a surprise. Doesn't even seem to be looking for a Serpent's Mask, which... That's, I feel like Serpent's Mask is kind of like a core item on Black Feather. <sighs> Maybe it's the fact that he's getting burst down. The point he's not. Like, <laughs> he hasn't really been. Uh, yes, he has been three of the team's four deaths, but it's, it's not really a lot of burst that is being dished out. Turret's going to finally go down. Dragon Dagger finishes that one off. After burn on in, they're looking for another fight. Yeah, that's the Rose Defense 4. King Kopf's getting damaged onto all three. The Solar Storm comes out, but this is the fight the team regulators were looking for. Nemesis on the run. Super Shot's down. And Dragon Dagger should be short to follow here. Arcane Passage right on over. Dragon Dagger, let's see if he can buy some time. He is the Lance. Well, they're going to go ahead and get that execute right there. That's the Ace going the opposite way. And now a kill lead. Team regulators, this is going to be a gold mine as well. What just happened? Well, uh, apparently, you know, falling behind in farm doesn't really matter if you can team fight, and that's exactly what regulators were able to do there. And again, the the sort of you know hesitance from Nemesis to really commit to a fight, they finally do try and commit to one, but it ends up being in honestly not the best of positions. And the Fountain of Renewal had to be used so early by Dragon Dagger that they just uh, by the time everything was everything was said and done like they were just melted absolutely melted i mean you let the black feather get on top of you in one of these fights he's he shiver steals up the celeste drops the atlas i mean it, it becomes very tough uh mm -hmm. for nemesis to fight and this is a double atlas right now for team regulators this is uh, it's, it's gonna be looking very good for them for a little bit here not only that but while yes savage alpaca is very far behind 
uh, Celeste in terms of farm, look at the items. Still has a Broken Myth and Eve of Harvest. Like, those are the only two items you really need as a Samuel to start just devastating people and being extremely difficult to kill. Has an Aegis on top of it, but now Savage Alpaca is going to get engaged on. Now, you still have to have decent positioning, though. And uh, he does not. He's going to be paying for that. Well, he learned a little bit of lesson there. And it was a free lesson, free of charge, coming from Nemesis Titan. Chicken Kaka is going to knock Zardy back. Get a little twisty stroke damage out there. Trying to chunk him down. Will find the kill. King Cobb was doing his best to be a nuisance. But ah, you know what? He's going to go down as well. Chicken Kaka getting the double kill. That's the ace for Nemesis. And it happens right while they're pushing. So there's going to be a minion wave coming down. They're going to get more pressure onto the next turret here. Well, the explosion goes ahead and does pretty good damage to the, the minions, but let's see if they can get something else. Savage Alpaca engaged on... War is that War Treads forward? My goodness. Goodness, I said. And Dragon Dagger will be able to avoid death as the, he gets out from underneath the turret. The rest of the team following suit, and yeah, well, you know, maybe they lost the full three-on-three -three team fight, but when they kind of go for the kills one at a time, they are able to find an ace... I have to question uh, Zardi with that the portal was down and just kind of walked into it and put themselves much closer to Nemesis than they had to be at all. And that was really when Chicken decided to jump in with the afterburn was right after Zardi took that portal kind of on that angle inwards. And you know, just, there was no reason to step through it. Well... Can't have that back. You can only move no, you forward cannot. here. Can only move forward. So what's the, what's the play for team regulators? How do they approach this? I feel like they just need to uh, really focus on sticking together. Uh, don't let yourselves get caught out like they just did in that last uh, series of events. Savage Alpaca needs to be staying on the back lines as far away as possible so that you can still throw out the Malice and Verdicts with a Drifting Dark, but isn't at risk of being afterburned into the thick of things. And really, that's really it. As long as they, if they can just kind of go all in on a fight when they do call for one, like right now. Yeah, they're all in. Super Shot's taking a lot of damage with Solar Storm and the Eve doing work. Super Shot kites backwards with a Helio. They're going Supernova, but Super Shot, he's probably going to go down the core collapse. Blocked by Zardi. Godly plays. Chicken Kaka is fighting Savage Alpaca out towards the east. Dragon Dagger, 2 on 1 towards the west. Who's going to live through this? Chicken Kaka looks like he's got the best of Samuel Samuels down. They get the kill on the west side there. Sardi and King Kov are going to be happy about that. Now they're trying to find this glaive. Where is Chicken Kaka? Well, Zardi took the right path. He's got that sigil down. He'll pop it for King Kov. And Chicken Kaka shouldn't be able to be getting out of this one. Yeah, no, not at all. Not with the movement speed and the chase potential that Blackfeather has. They find the kill and another ace, and that's it. Just go all... When they do go for a fight, go all in. Take down Super Shot or Chicken, whichever one you have the opportunity for. I feel like Super Shot is the better target because you saw what just happened. You know, Savage Alpaca can easily kite out really any member of Nemesis because Samuel is just very good at kiting. King Cobb needs to be careful that he doesn't get chunked down here, but will get his heal from Lyra. Doesn't get the movement speed, though. And the super feel, shot. The feels when super that shot. Whoa. Oh, man. Super shot, and this is my solar storm. And that was like... Zardy if just had to pop that heal a little bit faster. Would have given control. the move speed over to King Cobb, and King Cobb would have gotten out. King Cobb's like, dude, what was that? And he's like, I remember when you <laughs> took my foreign bird. <laughs> oh, there the go. Poker, like, yeah, I know he's roaming this game. Doesn't mean it doesn't ever. Oh, oh, okay. I thought for a second Zardi was gonna get that steal with the sigil. Oh, no, Zardi's but, tilted. Kraken going on over to the side of Nemesis. It's still not lost though. Like they still have three turns to burn through. All members of the side of regulators are up, and they can still very easily just go for an all-in fight. That's they're, the problem is, like, literally the only times where they start losing is when one of their members just gets picked off. That It's that simple. All right, well, let's see what they can do here. Team Regulators trying to make Warren G proud. The Bright Bull works down. The Drifting Dark backwards. Oh, no. Zardi stunned up from that core collapse. He does get the Arcane Passive backwards. Sajal Palka repositioned by that afterburn. He's going to get chunked down. 
Yeah, this looks like it's gonna be all she wrote. King Kong tries to get on the super shot in the back, but that's a double kill for Nemesis. Plus, they still have the Kraken. This is, uh, this should be GG. It absolutely should be, and Zardy is just getting caught out there, even though the... <laughs> oh, you're gonna get hit by one of those stuns, essentially, but even... Mount even though uh, Zardy did get the Arcane Passage out, like, this team has been relying so much on the Arcane Passage in with a bright bulwark to prevent Chicken Kaga from getting the afterburns off, so it's uh, definitely, again, what it what it came down to was if someone got caught they just lost to the fights and when they were able to fight as three and they were the ones making the engagements they were generally able to find the kills and turn you know start turning the game looked like they were going to make a nice comeback there but unfortunately for regulators it is nemesis titan picking up the victory in game number one yeah they looked good i'm ready for Dragonborn, uh, we'll get this going pretty soon, I imagine. Uh, but were, were you impressed with uh, Nemesis Titan performance there? You know what? I I was a little concerned early. Uh, it didn't seem like they were playing together a lot uh, as well as they should have. Uh, some of those team fights didn't go their way, and a lot of it was because they did allow uh, Super Shot to get kind of caught out in the back line. Like he wasn't far enough back, or or just the Black Feather's innate ability to jump to the back line easily. Uh, and of course, uh, Lyra definitely helped. I think um, I think they they played okay. I wasn't super impressed. Were you humanist? Uh, no, I wasn't really impressed. I thought there was a lot of st sloppy stuff early and yeah, exactly. uh, some hesitation and, and some of the earlier team fights. I mean, it felt like their experience and individual play kind of carried them to victory here. But as they face better opponents, they will get dropped out uh, or down into elimination brackets. Well, if they play like this... Right, yeah. like if they, I don't think they will. I think, but, especially but that's the, that's a major problem. Like I, I don't like that. If if you are going to be facing opponents of better quality soon on, uh, soon after, and your goal is to make it into Evil Eight, then you should treat every one of these matches like it's Evil Eight. I agree, and I think just a little bit of sloppiness. The picks were not maybe as strong as they could have. I mean, the glaive is never like an awful pick. You can, you know, if you're very skilled on the glaive. But I think a lot of it, you know, just looking at it, it felt like they picked the glaive because they're like, oh, we can win this easily. So we're just going to pick something that we want to have fun with versus taking it very seriously. And, you know, they ended up having to really take it seriously later on. They played a lot more cohesively, those last two team fights. Uh, you know, Super Shot able to stay alive by just playing smarter, positioning better. That's very important, and I just I think they need to play like that. If they play like the way they played the last two minutes of the game, they'll be fine. But yeah, early game, a little bit rough. We are about ready to get going into game number two. Uh, looks like teams have switched, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, again, this is Nemesis Titan versus Team Regulators. I was actually very impressed with Team Regulators so far. Uh, they've really done a great, you know, they did a great job, uh, but I think uh, Nemesis Titan, they're looking, if they look like they did the last couple minutes, they're looking dominant as we get into this second game. Of this series. So with that, we're gonna get over to the draft. Tasty Bacon, we are in the draft so far. First picks on the band have been uh, put in, and it uh, looks like this is moving along quickly. Yeah, definitely a quick couple of first picks. Kestrel, gonna be that first pick here, finally getting through the draft. And we've seen a lot of teams focusing on banding it away, so regulators, they go ahead and grab it. Well, it's going to be the nice uh, Scarf answer. I think Scarf actually does very well into Kestrel. It's going to be coupled up with the Lance, so a great front line for this team. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to see. Uh, Scarf, obviously extremely strong late game, and it is something that a lot of people have had problems dealing with in you know both Evil 8 and Challengers and all across Vainglory, so it'll be interesting. Be interesting indeed. Twitch chat's interesting tonight. By the way, Bacon, you haven't stopped in. Haven't seen you in there. I have not. Actually. Hmm. Do you not Twitch chat when you're casting? Uh, sometimes. Not usually, though. Mm. Okay, I gotcha. Try to, try to keep it professional. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I realized a long time ago that wasn't a possibility for me. <laughs> Just working with what I got here. <laughs> 
Oh, we'll have to see what's going to come of this game as it is Sky Kestrel Arden to be taking on the Ringo Lance Scarf. So, Jungle Ringo? What? Oh, I wasn't paying attention for a little bit here. Um, <laughs> yes. Yep. Make it happen. I mean, don't knock it till you tried it, Bacon. I, I'm not knocking it. I have. I did not knock Jungle Ringo. Oh, I, I heard it in your voice. Jungle Ringo. Don't I've seen it work. I've seen it dominate. Jungle Ringo. I. You can go check my Twitter feed and go back. Like it's a few months at this point, I think. But I was heavily defending Jungle Ringo. You're heavily defending it right now. I am heavily defending it right oh, now because Jungle Ringo is pretty. You know, the largest dumpster Jungle can Ringo I've works. Been put into in like the last month was by a Jungle Ringo, and I was devastated. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jungle Ringo is a thing that works. Like, it's not, it may not be the most ideal, but it definitely does work. Okay. Chicken <laughs> Kaka overestimating his potential there just gets uh, dropped in his own dumpster can. I've seen regulators just uh, put him into the grave quite quickly. And this is going to be King Kov with the aggressive positioning. He's going to look to take away some of the jungle here. With Super yeah. Shock getting lit up in the lane. Sardian Dragon doing a pretty good job. Well, I'm, I'm watching down here. King Kov is going to get any of these backs. He gets one. He gets two! The most hyped I've heard someone about being get it, about picking up farm, I think. In, That's uh, big! Look at his respawn, couple hours. He might as well have just teleported home. He got the backs. He's going to respawn. He's going to go right back out and get his own backs. He just won the game. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Where rhythm is life, and life is rhythm. Where is that even from? It was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Warren G was on the streets, trying to consume. That doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help. Then no, there is doesn't. no hope for you. Can I, I don't... Dragonborn, can we get Fork Word in here? <laughs> I bet a Canadian would know that one. I've got him on the phone. Um, no. I'm just kidding. But honestly, we'll we'll have to uh I'm assuming to... it's hip hop. I don't really listen to hip hop. <sighs> the most like hip hop I listen to is when I tune into your stream. No don't joke. admit that. Don't admit that. Okay. <laughs> Look, this is a bit sloppy here, but Chicken Kaka hasn't died thus far, so it's looking pretty good. Dragon Dagger with the boots into a better position. Spitfire's coming out. It's already he's booted for and he wants a little bit of this Ringo. He's gonna get some of the Ringo. Dragon gets the kill, he gets a double kill. In fact, Kestrel has her own boots. She uses those boots to get into a better position. Super Shot turns around. He's like, you know what? I could kill these guys if I landed a Spitfire. Doesn't know where Zardy is, though. King Kov comes forward. Spitfire misses. That's going to be Surrey Strike. And will the Ford Barrage be there? Super Shot will go down. They don't even need it. Regulators mount up. Regulators are mounting up. Four to one on the kill count early on in this game. You can see the gold is slightly in their favor, not by much, but you know, every little bit counts. Every little bit does count indeed. Well, four to one. Nemesis Titan. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is here. I mean, obviously, you have the Scarf, so you need to just get that farm on Scarf. He's going to be farming. Does get most of the farm under this turret here, so that's going to be great for him. Dragon Dagger. Just needs to get the mediocre farm, I think, honestly. Like, the jungle Ringo's, like, get some levels, get decent farm, and just be that annoying, annoying nuisance that they have to actually pay attention to, or you're gonna you're gonna do something other and you're just making space for, for the scarf to actually get the work done later in the game. Yeah, uh, you are just it it's all about the late game with a scarf. You have super shot. Obviously knows this. I'm sure his teammates know this as well. So they're not going to be too concerned about falling behind a little bit here in the early goings. Especially when it's really not by much at all. So once uh, Scarf gets an item or two under his belt, he's going to be doing a lot more damage and will be a major threat. Man, let's see. Nemesis Titan, what can they do? Guns to my head. I think I'm going down. I can't believe it's happening in my own town. If I had wings, I would fly! Let me contemplate. I'll look at the respawn timer, and I see my homie Kestrel. 4-2. <laughs> so, a nice kill for, for Nemesis, as they get up on uh, on the Kestrel there in lane. Uh, the dragon just didn't see that coming. Well, definitely did not. <laughs> so, I, I have uh, found the song that you were referencing. 
Oh, nice. You're listening to it. No, I, I, that would distract me too much. But I found the lyrics. I understand. Okay. Well, super it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty very, cool. very close to going down there. Yeah, it was very, very close. And we're going to have a pretty good fight breaking out here. King Kov's going to Suri strike forward onto Dragon Dagger. He wants him, but whoa, I was gonna say he's not going to get him, but he does get him. Indeed. Chicken Kaka's going to go down as well. Yes, Chicken Kaka should die. Die like a good Chicken Kaka. Turns around, gets the impale onto Dragon. And Zardy will drop that Vanguard on Dragon as well, just to go ahead and get themselves back to that jungle shop a little quicker. Yeah, well, I mean, 6-3 on the kill on the scoreboard. Looks nice, but again, the gold not really going the way regulars would hope with the that kind of kill advantage, as it is still very much even and actually slowly starting to swing in favor of Nemesis Titan. So that is uh, not a good sign when you're up against a scarf. It is a not good of a sign. And uh, this is the du the double weapon. I mean, we'll hold that. Zardy's getting lit up. Woo! Okay. What? A I don't know about that fountain. But uh, maybe a bit of a, bit of a misclick. The Hellfire Brew is going to come out. Do they follow up on this at all? Nah. Just a little bit of a flex coming out of Dragon Dagger. And he, he puts them down a little bit so they're not full health. And then... It, it just puts them in a situation where they can't actually take any engagement. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a tough spot to be in. Right now for Nemesis, I mean, you know, you kind of started to touch on it, I think, there a little bit. Was with the <laughs> Zardy's going to have the recall just kind of stopped. I don't think you realized it at first, but uh, you know, double weapon, that alone kind of puts you on a little bit of a timer to begin with. But mm -hmm. then to go up against a scarf with that too, like you are on such a massive timer at that point, and uh, it's just it's not the pace that they're currently setting. I mean, maybe it's the like their own their own little mini game, you know. But if the if they are like I said, they it's one thing to set a timer for yourself um, through that through the draft. Yeah. It's another thing to then not play as if you had that timer, which is exactly what, like, they are playing far too slowly right now. But strategically, you can make the argument that if you go too early, it's not going to work either, right? So they're going to wait for that perfect moment, Bacon, and they're going to strike. Well, they, they better strike. hope that moment is soon because your super shot is getting closer and closer to finishing off that second item. And once he does, it's going to be very difficult to deal with uh, this scarf. Yeah, they got big problems because Zardy just had to sell Fountain. He's already got no health. He's going to have to teleport as well. I don't know about this one, Bacon. This is going to be Nemesis putting pressure onto the turret. Death front buff's going to come down at a decent angle. That's the gauntlet that Zardy wishes he'd never threw. And that's going to be on cooldown. Dragon Dagger moves forward. So I'm the only dragon around these parts. Oh, one shot, one block from Chicken Kaka. Super shots just poking from range. Hellfire Brew is going to come out. The root, the impale. There's some combos. Nemesis. And that dragon's fire breath. They're going to be moving forward. Oh, it's so nice. It's toasty in here. Yeah, it gets a lot of work done. The turret is going to take a little bit of punishment, but more spitfires, more goops. Zardy not quite going to get hit by the impale, so will not be going down just yet. But again, Nemesis, they are definitely starting to hit their stride here. Mm-hmm. I'm starting all over in chat saying that I'm not going try hard right now. And I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, the thing is, like, starting doesn't realize, like, I go, like, mega super try hard when he's playing. Because it's just so exciting. Don't chicken. Gonna be trying to be this front line for the team. Death from above coming down. Chicken should be falling here. Will be falling. Dragon Dagger now trying to avoid that forward barrage. So is Super Shot. They will be successful in backing off. And now... 78 Dragon can look to put some punishment onto this turret. Potentially even take it down. Will be able to take it down. Turret destroyed. One shot, one kill. Just as a celebration, I guess. Yeah, because why not? And uh, this is a gold mine going to be going the way of Team Regulators. Nate Dog Warren G would be quite happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's going to be a great, great boost for their team. Uh, net worth lead. I wish they would clear out the scout trap in this tri bush. It's very important that you're controlling vision. If, if you want to beat uh, a team like Nemesis Titan or a better team, then you definitely have to control this vision. Yeah, it's uh, definitely you know, small things like that 
It may not seem like much at the time, but they those are keys. Like in the Evil Eight, teams are ruthless. They'll jump on stuff like that, and you leave, you leave that vision open later in the game. They see, you know, oh hey, we know where they are right now. We can just make a small little you know, micro play, and all of a sudden they just start snowballing the game. It's it may sound like this, you know, kind of a joke when we talk about things like just a single scout trap like that, but you know. Like you kind of said after the last game, you have to be playing as if you're at the top level at all times. Yeah, exactly. And Dragon Dagger, well, <laughs> he's playing like he's against the wall because he walked into the gauntlet right there, and he's going to pay for it with his life. Team Regulators, they are in a great position to find some more kills. Chicken Kaka with a combat roll forward. He turns around with the Impale, doing pretty good work, but King Cobb will get the double kill. Super shot, last man standing for Nemesis Titan. I don't think Regulators will want to go ahead and mount up on that one. They're going to get back, just go ahead and get their own farm, clear out through the jungle here. But there's a lot of vision down, all right? Like, they need to clear this vision out. This is game losing right here. This is no joke at all. This is full seriousness. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of scout traps down for Nemesis. And that's one of the reasons why they will have a really good chance to win this. Is If you know where your opponents are, you can just plan so well your movements around the map just based on that information and they have full vision of like the middle of the map and a little bit forward so if they don't see anyone from the regulators like they know that they can push up without really any concern yeah pretty much it just allows you to have yeah you, you get as much out of the map as as actually possible if you're taking full advantage of that vision you, you should never be surprised and you know sun Tzu would tell you Oh, that, that's the element of surprises everything when it comes to victory in battle. Yeah, it really is. As of right now, we're going to be looking for a fight here. However, Hellfire Brew coming through. The Force Dagger away. Off. Or Dragon away. Oh, well, there are breaking point stacks coming out for King Kov. Oh, he's getting lit up. Does find the kill onto Ringo. It's a trade one for one. Vanguard comes out on to Dragon. He's going to eat a spit fire, and that's the, the wonderful thing about the Scarf into Kestrel right here. A Glimmer shot. Oh, it tickles Super Shot a little bit. He's going to have to need to, need to have some breaking point stacks and actually land a couple of those to really chunk through this Scarf right now. Yeah, it's uh, Scarf... Like I said, gonna just continuously get stronger. Has the Fountain and Eve, so it's already very difficult to take down. Has some pretty good energy regen as well. Not quite as much as Super Shot kind of seems to need because he is running low on energy during these trades. But uh, you know, it's still it's gonna be so tough for regulators to win this game at this point because Scarf is just getting so strong. Even the Ringo is you know, starting to really scale up. Is just Kind of a little bit of gold away, getting that uh, breaking point. Once breaking point comes out, I feel like the Ringo's going to be you know, almost devastating in these fights as well. See, I'm not even happy with the Ringo right now. Like, I feel I like Dragon Dagger <clears throat> as a person, as a player, but I mean, he's going to have to get that breaking point. Plus, he's on, he really wants an infusion. And mm -hmm. on top of that, if he has to use boots before then, then he's going to go into a situation where he might not have boots up. We'll see how this plays out. Zardi's getting lit up pretty good here. Nemesis are fighting well. Dragon Dagger will boot and reflex back into a better position where he can fight, where Ringo wants to fight from that range. And Spitfires galore just coming out of Super Shot. Super Shot really starting to come into his zone. Spitfires are landing. He's at five broken missed stacks. Dragon just trying to kite backwards, gets that active camo down, but it's too predictable right there. Nemesis is not going to really walk into that. Chicken Kaga, potentially, as he's looking to clear out so many scout traps, but you're not going to have one of the carries of Nemesis just wander into that active camel. Hellfire Brew is going to come out over the wall into the Impale, but it's both, they're both going to be... Oh, no, it's uh, just a blocked Impale, as the Hellfire Brew does actually land there. Yeah, now, the problem that I have with uh, Nemesis right now is when they go for these fights, they, you know, their target selection, I think, could use some work. Uh, like, that last one, they were going, like, all in on the Arden, and Dragon Dagger especially, they ended up walking into almost melee range with the Sky as a result. And you have to be wary of, like, yes, if you get a target low, you want to try and kill them, but you can't mm -hmm. sacrifice your own positioning just to do that. You have to recognize, okay, I'm getting a little bit too close. That's a good time to switch targets onto, you know, the Sky or the Kestrel when you have the chance to hit them. You know, yeah, I do agree with you on that. And also, Bacon, I've got to say, like, Nate Dog would have said to Warren G that they're gonna need a bone saw if they're gonna go double weapon. And right now, that's just not happening. 
Uh, <laughs> well, right now I'm they serious. are going to get this. <laughs> John's this Vanguard, but off. it's not enough. Zardy has it. Too late. His ally is dead. King Kov. Oh my gosh. And it's going to be Zardy going down his full 78 dragon. Not much he can do. He doesn't even have a one shot to try and snipe out a Kraken at this moment if they were going to go for it. Maybe by the time they go for it, he can go ahead and try to throw that one out. But these are uh, desperate times right now. Yeah, but, you know, he, he w might have the one shot up by the time they go for Kraken, but it's not like he'd know because they have no vision whatsoever. Yeah, I guess 78 Dragon, uh, some godly prediction uh, credit. Uh, I was taking a jab at the fact that they literally have had no vision for a, quite some time in this game. No, mm -mm. they've had pretty good vision. Regular points. No, they haven't. Yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Say what? Oh Turn my up. goodness! Woo! Regulators, mount up! Let's go right now, King Kong! Holy moly! With the board barrage, he's got the target locked on. Trying to get some more right now. He's just uh, stacking up that breaking point a little bit right now. What's up? What is like, up? Nemesis, you were an evil eight team. How do you Woo! let this happen? That wasn't like a sneaky angle Whoa. or anything like that. That was the default standard angle. How is nobody blocking that one shot? How do you expect the default standard angle to be coming out? That was godly. How do you not stand in front of like, just put all three members on that side of the Kraken and this doesn't happen? Look, because 78 Dragon is such a good player, they thought there's no way it's coming from that angle. He's definitely repositioned the other side of us right now. But they didn't even block go. that. The only position they were That's, blocking was if he was at the jungle good. shop. <laughs> when, you're, when you're that good, these are the kind of <laughs> players you that you can sneak make. into the jungle shop while your team, while the, you, if your opponent manages to sneak into the jungle shop while you have complete vision of the middle of the map. Exactly. I mean, this is a cat. Maybe, maybe, maybe there was a crystal infusion picked up. This is a cat. Don't know. I don't know. <sighs> don't try and defend this. <laughs> that was a. Horrible, horrible mistake by Nemesis. Honestly. Thankfully for them, it won't cost them the game. No, it Most likely. Much at all. That was money in their pocket. And they did lose out on turrets. Maybe they did that on purpose. No, no they didn't. I mean, let's be real. That's, that's pretty good gold infusion right there. But they No, because they lost the turrets. Super Shot's that. like, you know, I could use about 500 gold. Right now? <laughs> They're like, oh, dude, we'll just get Kraken. Let him one-shot it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they can say something. <laughs> See, Para flinches. Para flinches in chat right now. He says it's all part of the plan. They just want the 500 gold Kappa. But you have to imagine he doesn't really mean the Kappa on the end. Some people don't understand how to use the Kappa in chat. I'm pretty sure that they fully understand how to use the Kappa in chat on that sentence in particular. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> just, <sighs> we'll I just don't back. understand, like, if this was, like, two completely no-name teams, maybe, but, like, this is a team that was in the Evil 8. You, you cannot make mistakes like that and expect to make it back to the Evil 8. And geez, but, where's the great Gatsby? Hmm? Huh? See? Gatsby, Gatsby wouldn't have let that happen. Gatsby would have said, you know what? It's probably going to one-shot, guys. And it's probably going to come from just your, st your standard angle there. So Plus you're the saying... Uh... And figure out where we should stand here. So you're saying that uh, they need to bring Gatsby back into the lineup? I wouldn't say that because Supershot is doing a pretty good job. But I, I, I like both of them. And it doesn't come down to just one person. This is a team. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, I do think Gatsby is a pretty good player. Not to say that that oh. would have changed things there. The Gauntlet's down. A two-man stun. Very nice. <gasps> One shot, one kill coming out. Dead Ringo. Nemesis Titan on a retreat. Super shot. He's going to land some Spitfires. Head back to the healing platform. And well done. Da -da -da -da. Bacon. Uh, Bacon. I can't help but laugh. The gauntlet only got the stuns because Chicken knocked back Arden as he started it. That was nice. The gauntlet was going to be behind the members of Nemesis. But Chicken hit him with the Githian wall, 
and Zardy ends up getting a double stun as a result. <laughs> Chicken knew the only way to bait them into taking crack again was to make that fight happen. He said, Arden, your gauntlet's just a little off. Let me adjust that for you. Dragon! Taking a little dragon breath to the face. Super shot doesn't know what to do. Super shot, make a decision. One shot, one kill. It's gonna come out as Lance goes down, saving his ally. Super shot, just like I want to get in there, but I'm pretty scared. Wishes he had some vision. It comes back to the vision. Look, look at all that vision that you were talking about. All that lack of vision. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, there was vision for Nemesis, right? There was. There used to be a ton of vision for Nemesis, but they Dialing haven't with. put any down since that point. And even with Chicken picked up a um, contraption and still hasn't really put any uh, vision down since then. <clears throat> well, it's a big wave of minions. It's going to be a lot of gold going to Dragon. Dude, I don't even know. This game is pretty hard to predict. It really is. It, it's another one of those situations where it feels like uh, neither team really wants to win. No, uh, I... Dragon, I, I, what are you... Dragon, that was going to hit Kraken the entire time. What are you doing? He's full adrenaline stacks, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the gauntlet secures the mid camp here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't have chicken that time to set up the gauntlet stuns. <laughs> They're going to kind backwards now. Hellfire Brew will come out. King Cop taking a lot of damage. Nemesis maybe taking the fight that they were looking for. Dragon Dagger with a stutter step like a god. Light Zardy up. Arden, you're dead. Roasted and toasted. Spitfire will secure the next kill. They're on the chase. King Cop, nothing he can do. Bre no breaking point stacks. He's got to get out of here. No boots. Oh, those are journey boots. Like, he just needs to get an attack off so he gets uh, those reset there. King Cop threw out a uh, forward barrage during that fight and then didn't move. And neither did anybody on Nemesis, so the entire forward barrage just kind of missed. I think he was expecting people on Nemesis to move around. Like, how do you predict that someone's not going to move? <laughs> I, you, it's a tough one, but uh, how do you then not move in response to your own? But either way, with the Weapon Power Ringo and a Crystal Scarf going uh, to take that Kraken exceptionally quickly. And now we finally have a Kraken going the way of Nemesis, as they are going to be pushing in, taking down that turret very, very quickly. All right. Regulator, <clears throat> you're on your last leg here. Gauntlet's going to go down, and that's one reflex block from a Ringo. But Death Row Bluff comes forward, King Cobb. You want to find this target, move forward. He's locked onto Ringo. Ringo's locked onto King Cobb. There's the root King Cobb. Sorry, strikes back. He's down, but it's a two for one in favor of Nemesis Titan. Now Zardy, last man standing. Now oh, he's going to go down. This is the A. It's going to be the ace. I thought maybe he was about to make the play. It looked like he was going to make the play, but Kraken, barely touched, is just going to be marching into the base. 30 seconds on the death timers, and with a scarf, this should be game over. And Nemesis Titan didn't look pretty. Well, not at all. But they do manage to get themselves the victory. Oh, there you go. Doesn't have to look pretty. As long as uh, you win the game right there. Yeah, it looks the same. It'll look the same next week when we look back at the at the uh, bracket. So. Congratulations to them. It's going to be regulators, I guess, dropping into, into the elimination bracket. Yep. Regulators down to the elimination bracket. I mean. While you know you want to look at that game and say, well, regulators actually you know fought very well and you know almost came back and almost took a game off of Nemesis. At the same time, Nemesis like they seriously need to step up their game if they're going to make it through the Challenger series and back into the Evil Eight. And you know it's normally I wouldn't be so harsh on a team after they just won like this, but we've seen Nemesis Titan play vastly superior games than what they just played today. Hey, mistakes are made from time to time, but uh, Dragonborn, a man mm -hmm. who's uh, used to making mistakes of his own, is ready to take this hostage <laughs> away. Man! Alright, well, I've checked that dust, dust off my shoulders, alright? I got a chip on my back. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to get this 
on the road. We're going to actually get into the next matchup. The other team has been waiting, so a little bit of a change of pace here as uh, we will not be waiting for the team. They have been waiting for us, uh, and it is an exciting one, actually. It is Team Vertigo uh, going up against Team Tryhards, and Tryhards is a name you may not know, but the players are ones you definitely have. We'll get you guys into that roster and into that first game of round number three when we come back after this break. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. All right, everybody, we are back, and we are getting ready for round number three. We've made it all the way through the first two rounds of the winner bracket. We do have the loser bracket running concurrently, and uh, we will update you guys on that momentarily. But as we finish up the winner bracket for today, uh, going up only up to round three today, uh, we are going to be concluding with a pretty exciting matchup. And it is Vertigo Black, a team that really shined last split, and they actually performed better than I think a lot of people expected. Uh, and they are going up against a roster that, although the name may be new, the players on the roster are not. Timbo Kill, Iponyu, and Zynex. Uh, these are players that have definitely been in the competitive scene for some time. So we are uh, pretty excited to have this matchup. I think it's going to be really close, Tasty Bacon, because um, you know these are actually both really strong lineups. Uh, it could, I'm really not sure. You know, Vertigo Black. I would say in the first couple rounds here should have had an easy, easy go of it. But this is a roster that's going to give them some trouble. Yeah, it very well could. I mean, this is matchups like this are like one of the reasons why the challengers format was changed to being a double elimination bracket. Uh, because you know, both of these teams could potentially um, very easily end up in the uh, final week of the challengers. So uh, Noble Black or Vertigo Black, they are a team that they made it to the top four in the previous split. So definitely a team to contend with there. Yeah, Humanist, you know, looking at these teams, I mean, you've probably gotten to see a little bit of Vertigo. Um Maybe you've seen a little bit of Iponyu. I mean, he's been around for some time. Him and Timbo kill it as well. Uh, and, you know, these these are rosters that actually should uh, perform quite well. I don't know if you have any takes on that, like, from what you've seen so far. I, I would expect these guys to come out and play, you know, to the meta to a certain extent and execute at a pretty high level. Um, I, I, I don't know if there's going to be, like, too solid of predictions coming out here, but I would expect, like, high-level performance out of these guys. Yeah, same. Uh, I think, you know, if we see the Vertigo Black that was in last split, uh, I do suspect that, you know, it's going to be a pretty close matchup, but I think they might come out with it. But if not, I mean, tryhards, again, if these players have been practicing a lot, if they've been, you know, trying to mold into a really strong team, these all of these players have the capability, uh, the skill set to do it. Uh, they've been doing it for some time, so they've been playing this game for a while. So I... I, I'm really excited to see this one. I think this is going to be a great uh, finish to the round three. We still have some loser bracket matches that we're going to be jumping into after this. So we're not done with streaming. But we, uh, I think from the winner's bracket, this is definitely going to be a fun matchup to watch. 
Definitely agree. All right, so waiting for these teams to get going here, as you know, they were waiting on us, uh, but of course, you know, they had to wait for the last match to go. So now we're just going to get into the queue. Looks like that was taken care of, and uh, we should be getting in. I don't know if uh, you guys all got invites from yes. Hammy. All right, we're just waiting for Dragonborn. Dragonborn, uh, that guy. That guy. Holding up the line. All right. Well, I think we're I think we're all set now. So, without further ado, uh, I am going to kick it to you guys to start as we get this draft rolling. Uh, Tasty bacon uh, for game number one of Vertigo Black versus Tryhards R Us. All right. Well, as soon as the draft does get underway, we will be bringing it to you. There we go. Getting on into this one. And let's see what the side of Vertigo Black decide to do with their ban. Looks like uh, Afro Gum wants a Kestrel ban. Or maybe wants to play Kestrel. He's not going to get it. I mean, they, if, if it doesn't get banned, he will. It's going to get banned. Humanist the Prophet. Dun, 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 dun. Now let's uh, let's see. What am I set the, the tempo with? It? It's gonna be the lance. It, you know, this is a great flex pick. I think for this team, it's not gonna reveal too much about them. Um, I do remember they played this uh, a couple times last split, and uh, pretty high effect. So this is gonna be their jungler, can be the roam, and then you're gonna have. <laughs> What's their team name again? <laughs> um, Tryhards are us. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Understandably so. It's okay. So. They're going to go with the Finn. <laughs> Finn first pick. I want to eat a couple of this up with. You already banned out the Kestrel. It's going to be the Sky. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the Samuel. But. I don't, I'm really not sure why so many teams have like fallen away from Samuel. He, yes, he got nerfed, but they weren't like major nerfs. Mm. It's, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's that exciting to play. And there are other things that do a job similar, if not better, right now. But yeah, I mean, it's still a strong pick. Saw is gonna come out. This is gonna oh, be boy. fun. Oh Saw lands Catherine. That's uh. A pretty powerful composition. Lots of utility to keep opponents inside of a suppressing fire. Yeah, it definitely is. And suppressing fire to set up. Um, I'm chatting here. To set up a stun, to set up the impale. I mean, it's great combos there. And they they're like, you know what? Let's let's get Taka. Taka feels like it'd be good into this. Yeah, that's exactly what they're thinking and what they decide to go with. Uh, Taka can do well into the Lance and the Saw. I think a lot of people are playing Taka right now because they're just hyped about the upcoming Taka Tier 3 skin. You think, really, honestly, that's what's going on? It's I your professional that's analysis? That's my professional analysis. I never realized that Saw sits there and kicks around the water balloon before the game starts. I will have to take your word on this one. I notice either. Well, if Dragonborn kept the uh, camera on them at the start of the game, then it was seen on stream. Saw was definitely like, like you know how people sit there and do tricks with soccer balls, like kicking it up repeatedly and then like kicking it way up and bending forward and having it land on the back of their neck. Like Saw mm, does that with a water balloon. I try not to watch like soccer highlights and things. Wow. Uncultured <laughs> swine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is everything pork with you, dude? <laughs> Jeez. All right, they're going to make the rotation down to the shop. Xenix is in the front. Timbo kill. Timbo's going to go ahead and aggro these uh, fronts backwards. He gets one, but Afrogum and Archaic are in hot pursuit. They get both, actually. This is going to be a big fight breaking out, and it's going to be Xenix going down first. Timbo, he's getting nice damage over to the duel. Uh, Hero's over on the left side of that fight, but he's gonna be rude in place. Hammy trying to get these basic attacks out. Iponu's on the back side nice getting block. the Ford Rods. This is 
Very awkward fighting here, but Akaku Ford. Oh, he wants Saw. He's going to get Saw. Timbo making this taco work. And Iponyu's going to be kind of off the mark with that Ford Barrage. Wish he would have got a target lock there, but um, I guess that caution is actually not going to work in his favor. Dips in there, buys a potion. No, and grabs the boots. He's going to activate the boots. He's going to need a tar target lock and some crazy plays here. If he's going to get something done, and uh, nothing's going to get done here. Yeah, three for one to just kick things off. No ace, obviously, because that fight took a very long time. But it is still three kills going on over to Vertigo. Getting a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence. Hmm. Confidence. That's just what you need, really, in this kind of situation. They're going to be able to pick up their own mids. Big, big deal for the team whose name mm -hmm. I forgot once again because the tag matches up very well. Virgo Black are going to be <laughs> slowly moving backwards and this talk is having a very strong impact here early on. Double weapon blade, a little bit of armor. Afrogum getting chunked down low. Archaic's in a bad place, but oh, that suppressing fire is pretty good, but Timbo Kill was immediately out of it, abusing that movement speed from the talk. How is Archaic still alive? Zenix should be going down. Zenix is down. Timbukill hiding in the bush. Hammy moves in. Hammy's in a vulnerable position. One more attack. And that's going to be Timbukill finding the kill on the saw with the Ford Barrage from Iponyu. Hitting Afrogum in the booty as Afrogum turns around. He gets chunked down. Timbo, he's on a tear. Timbo kill is, in fact, on a tear. Getting multiple kills and stealing away those mids, so he's not even going to have to recall after this. Great job by this Taka. And tryhards are us. They're going to be uh, looking pretty good off of those few kills. Getting some jungle stolen away as well means that they're going to be looking pretty good as far as the gold is concerned. Even though they're down a kill, they still have a you know minimal gold lead in their favor. So what do you think for uh, Tinbo here? A little uh, tension crown? Uh, I would assume tension crown would be the way to go. Oh my goodness, I pwn you. That's... That's the strength of this composition for Vertigo. And yeah, no need to into your name that way. They got you. Vertigo Black, pretty easy kill there, everything considered. And this is going to be Hammy and company just putting a little pressure out into the lane. Uh, Timbo has taken this opportunity to move into the backs. And he'll be taking away the back treant uh, away from Vertigo Black. So it's a nice little boost for him. Mm -hmm. and, Definitely uh, looking like, for the tension bow. Yeah, he's going to be uh, going for that tension bow. He's going to get the backs as well. Now, our Archaic is, I don't think he has any clue what's happening. He got his own mid, comes through that bush, and he's going to find Timbo here. This is going to be a quite awkward one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So, uh, Timbo's getting collapsed upon. Kaku's out towards the north there. Kind of a bit of a surprise factor. Hammy does find them. The Rurody run comes out right into that suppressing fire. Timbo kills just buying time right now for his team. Yeah, and well, he gets out safely, so great job by Timbo. Again, making some steals and just make, causing havoc for Vertigo. See, 25 to 14 on the jungle CS. And it's not very often that you see a Lance falling behind in jungle farm. <laughs> I mean, it's the, if it is, maybe it's going to happen against the talk. It's like, it's very hit or miss. Like, it could snowball either way, but Timbo, he's done a great... <laughs> okay, he's going he's gonna to miss the impale over the wall. And uh, that's going to be a pretty easy kill for Timbo. Gets that last hit. Four kills, one death for Timbo. Less than five minutes into this one. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and grab this minion mine. That's going to be a nice chunk of gold as well. 150 gold going over. And, uh, well, with 29 CS, 600 gold in the pocket, he's got enough for that tension bow. So he picks that one up. And now mm -hmm. his clear speed is going to be even faster. Yes, I like this. And uh, I like this is completed. And we'll see if he goes into... Uh... Storm Crown after we've seen some Takas go ahead and finish that tension bow. Others will just go <clears throat> straight into their next item right after this, skipping that tension or, or that Storm Crown rather, making that the tension crown build. But um I pwn you, this has happened multiple times where he just has no clue where the opponents are, and he gets stunned up, impaled, and uh chopped down very easily. But the thing is that if Taka's rotating through the jungle like this often, you have to know that if you don't see the enemies, there's a good chance they're gonna be in that brush up in the lane. Not only that, but with the Lance Catherine, like, you need to get a reflex block as quickly as you can. And I pwn you go, does finish off the Frostburn first item. Has a little bit of armor and really not even looking towards a reflex block yet. And I feel like that's a big mistake. Yeah, big mistake indeed. 
Well, that's uh, I mean, there are kills happening. Timbo's, you know, getting some pretty good work in here, but it's always got that potential to fall off. Zenix has his fountain. He's waiting on level six for that fin hook to come out. And Hammy, he's just playing for the late game, but he's got the shattered glass complete, so he's capable of getting pretty good damage out, especially against like a sky, a squishy target. Yeah, very squishy target, especially, you know, obviously building heavily towards the offensive items. But now, are they, are tryhards are us going to look to make an aggressive play? Looks like they're just kind of uh, rotating up, but now, maybe Vertigo Black trying to get some damage down. They're putting a lot of focus on the lane. Obviously, whenever there's a saw, you expect a good amount of lane focus, but... Look at Timbo solo the gold mine while this is happening. Yeah, Timbo just doesn't even care. He did go for that Stormguard banner. They do find a kill in the lane, but a kill for 220 gold each. I'll take that trade. Yeah, and the lane's not even really getting pressured. Iponyu's still in a pretty good position. Well, <laughs> he could put himself into a bad position based off the last couple times he's gone down. So we won't give him too much credit there, but for his team, tryhards. Oh, uh... <laughs> oh Archaic. Oh, Archaic. If Archaic was paying attention, they would have Oh, Timbo that. kill. Welcome to the party. Here's your Catherine treat. And uh, gets the kill there. So Timbo shows up, gets a kill, and right back into the jungle. Yeah, well, why not? They're spending so much time in the lane that Timbo has really had free reign in this jungle. And then when he goes up to lane, he gets a kill too. Like, And he just says, okay, now time to go get some more farm down here. Archaic is going to spot him though. And well, the possibility of the entire team rotating is going to send Timbo back up to the lane. Looking good. What do you think about this uh, Frostburn first for the Sky? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it on this particular composition. Largely because when you're getting engaged upon, you're just kind of, they're coming from an angle, not from, you know, a straight line in front of her. And it's just stuns and crowd control. Like, they're, they're coming out of the bush and not really, you won't have a time to react. Mm -hmm. for the frost burn to be effective enough to get you out of those ganks so i feel like especially with a saw on the opposing side like who do you, are you gonna lower saws movement speed even further like that's not really gonna do a whole lot so i would have preferred to see something other than a frost burn in this game yeah i got you for sure well, my Ponyo, he's at a little bit safer positioning here in the last couple minutes. It's nice to see. Hasn't gone down, but he's 0-3 uh, sitting, you know, nine minutes into this one right here. Both teams just posturing, waiting for maybe an opening where they can start this uh, fight on in their favor. Fitton doesn't want to throw that forced accord. Then you don't see the aggression coming out of the Lance Catherine. So both teams just happy to go ahead and, you know, call it a day. Go back to the rotations. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do, and just uh, rotations. I mean, they're slightly favoring the tryhards or us in the jungle. It's definitely in their favor, but in the lane, not so much. So it's just kind of a waiting game right now, and to see which team will go ahead and pull the trigger first. Hmm. Well, I feel like tryhards or us are going to pull the trigger because. They have named themselves tryhards. I mean, I don't think it's cool to admit that you're tryhard. Like, it's cool to pretend like you're not trying, but, um, you know, to each his own. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's it lets your opponents know, hey, you're taking this game seriously. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we'll see how it works out for them. Timbo, he's got the Storm Crown. He's made his way up into the lane. Afrogum eats a little bit of damage frontlining for his team. He's going to be just fine. Both teams waiting for that opening. Afrogum does have a Crucible. It looks like uh, Xenix is going to be working on his own, both for the ultimates coming out of each roamer here, really. We'll see uh, Xenix just kind of sitting there, and this is a very obvious situation. Both teams know exactly the potential of what could happen if this engagement happens. It could be a bloodbath. The quibble comes through. Not too much damage, really. It's just a poke back and forth, and the whole time the laners are just like farming. They're like, okay, you guys, you guys can stand there. I mean, one of you is getting gold, right? Yeah, and I mean, I'm just really surprised that Tryhards or us are not trying to make a fight happen here. A forced accord, you throw it out. If you don't hit, then you just back off, wait for it to be available again. If it hits, you pull in that saw, and Taka and Sky both jump on that saw. Like, once saw's down, how is Vertigo Black going to win a fight? 
I mean, yeah, Lance can do some solid damage, but it's in slow chunks. And, mm -hmm. like, it's... Well, on the sky, I think they can burst him down. Or burst the sky down. Probably the... I mean, the talk of the, the reason he probably won't get burst down is because he's going to dodge something, but... <laughs> Hyponia is stunned up. Nice three strike over the wall in a pretty good position. Afrogum eating good damage, but Taka... He has found Hammy. Hammy's gonna go ahead and reposition backwards, but the Force Accord's off the mark. See Afrogum? He's uh, holding that Blast Tremor, but Sky is dead. Still holding the- there you go, that's gonna be the Blast Tremor. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> Xenix! He turns around, gets that Quibble arc. Oh. should be going down. Timbo finds that kill. Now it's a 2 versus 2 Polite Company. Well, it's not gonna be getting too much for them there. It's gonna be Timbo right back down to the jungle. He's gonna take his forwards, maybe hit up the shop, wait for his jungle to spawn up. Get one of these trance where he can continue to snowball. <gasps> is he gonna move forward? Yeah, I'm sure he has key stacks up but right now. He's gonna kaku and he realizes, well, there are two there, so I'm not gonna go for it. Yeah, now Xenix used the Force Accord during the fight, and I, I get wanting to use it during the fight. It's much more difficult for a roamer to react and you pop that crucible in the middle of a team fight like that, <laughs> but like. I feel like that's a big problem because if the force cord doesn't hit, if it gets blocked, like he's it leaves them in a very vulnerable position, especially if they're trying to chase a fight and they throw it out and it doesn't hit. It allows your opponents to very easily just turn around and re engage onto the fight, knowing that that cooldown has been spent. So I really feel like Zinnick should be trying to use that Forest Accord to engage a fight. And like I said, if if you throw it out, if it doesn't hit, then you just immediately, your team backs up. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But they've been saving it very heavily. I'd like to game. see them, like, bait it out with some death from above. Like, bait out a reflex, you know? And then go ahead and go fishing, like, right after. Um, mm -hmm. And if they're not reflexing, then, you know, that death from above is landing, and you can follow up off that. Look at the mad cannon doing mad work right there. Xenix lets out the woohoo, drops a fountain on his uh, sky as well. And then it looks like they've uh, put the summon into Timbo. And Timbo's going to make his way up to the lane. Death from above is going to be off the mark here, Timbo. I was thinking about moving into that bush. Gets an attack or two off on the afro there. This is going to be the <laughs> suppressing fire, and uh, that's not going to be the force to that he actually wanted right there. Archaic getting lit up oh my goodness he just got melted yeah the risk of the lance if you don't hit the impale you are in a horrible position and stuck there for a couple for a second or two and that's exactly what just happened i'm not sure but i think vertigo lost <laughs> i'm serious Oh, it's definitely not game over yet, far from it. Still only a 2,000 gold lead, but they are going to take down the sky. And now Zinix trying to run away. It's all going to get the shank through, but doesn't have enough damage on it. Now Afrogum, he's nope, not going to go down. Timbo kill changing his target to Hammy, but here comes the Lance. And oh, Timbo. Hammy, Timbo oh. Oh. I am Taka, hear me roar. Timbo kill. I like this guy, man. Timbo's playing like a monster right now. Uh, Archaic, get some. Chase me. Combat roll at me. I'm a Taka. This is my box. This is my weapon infusion. Ready to go. T like, Timbo is just snowballing like a monster. They're playing incredibly well. Iponia will continue to scale. Of course, Saw will as well. But with the Finn, I think they're just going to be enabled to get more done here. Yeah, Timbo Kill actually went for a second fountain on the team. This is actually the you know tension crown build that Gabe Vizzle was using in the Summer Championships. He was the one who first told us about this build, uh, and so that's the way he had been playing it. I feel like this is a really effective way to play it, mm -hmm. especially against a Crystal Saw. Like you, you really aren't terribly worried about the damage from a. Uh, weapon lance unless it ends up being like a one-on-one -on -one situation at the end of things in the thick of a team oh! fight It's not a big concern. Oh, Hammy! That wasn't the crucible that they wanted. Tembo though! Bait it in! Vertigo! Or bait gods! As Hammy's able to get his way out of that one, he'll throw out the kitty pull teleport home. Archaic happy to hold the lane. Trade one for one, uh, Catherine for the Taka. Vertigo quite happy with that. That was a masterful bait there. And now Archaic is going to be taking a lot of damage. Nice death from above. He's going to roll through it. And, well, they're not going to find the kill. <laughs> no, I point you wanted that, though. Oh, look at Hammy. Oh, oh. suppressing fire is good. Look at all the... 838 damage, but it's not enough for Archaic frontlining. 
He will go down, and I pawn you, and Zinnick's still alive. Zinnick oh. can't drop the tree and dagger. Oh, there you go. Get yourself out of that one. Wow, things uh, got heated pretty quick there. That is so frustrating if you are hammy or archaic there. You're so close to getting two different kills, and you can't find either of them. That's rough. Yeah. It's pretty rough indeed, man. Oh, this, this Lance, like, I don't know what the plan is for him. Like, he picked up the Aegis, so that's gonna help him with the Sky here. But his damage output's not really gonna get much better from this point forward. Yeah, it looks like he may want to build another offensive item, but I'm not sure if that's the best of ideas. Timbo kill. Gonna be jumping on in and jumping on out. Nice suppressing fire death from above. Uh, well, I mean, it's on a short enough cooldown. I guess it doesn't matter if you just throw it out at will. Mm hmm Yeah, you can get away with that right now. Hammy went for the uh, the three point ult uh, over the max Brody run. Do you agree? Disagree? Ah, uh, I kind of heavily disagree. Mm -hmm. I I feel like the while yes, the mad cannon does a lot of damage. Like that, you're giving up so much damage on the Brody run in order to do so. Dragon just dropped a spoiler in chat. My man, he's uh, that's talented. I. You know, I've tried to spoil a game and I'm not even that good at it, so well done. What you. how what did Dragon do? Oh he just dropped in chat. Seventeen and no turrets this game. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen rip. star star. <laughs> <laughs> My man dragon. <laughs> <laughs> that was for the lulls. This guy he's a he's a good man. He's here he's just a true entertainer at heart. As are both of these teams. Timbo, he's cockooed in. Looking for a target. It's not going to happen. Mad Cannon was active there. And it's going to be a ready run into a better position. Afrogum eating some good damage, but... Oh, a Force Cord's going to come through. Stun on the Afro Afrogum. Timbo Kill. He's on chase the Chitin Ford eating a lot of damage. He needs to get better. Timbo Kill. He's still alive. And meanwhile, it was Hanley able to take Xenix down. Gosh, what a tough situation to be in here. Timbo, he wants Timbo. to de delete a target, but he doesn't want to get deleted himself. And Ipanyu doesn't have much energy to work with here. Archaic and Hammy taking a lot of damage. Bad Cannon! There's that damage! That's why he put three oh! points into it, but he doesn't have enough! Oh, uh, Timbo kill, you're gonna... How is he... He's gotta go down here. No, they're not gonna kill him. Oh my goodness. Humanist. What... What is going on in this game? Well... They're... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm at a loss, dude. I might have been able to theory craft something up earlier in the day. At this, at this point, I mean, these guys—they're just going ham. Oh, Kill, look at Hammy's build. Yeah, he's—he doesn't like—he uh, doesn't like shield. He's trying to get right through that. There's not even like that much shield. That's the sad part. Like, get through it. I, I guess there's there's only you know. A fountain for two members. That's their only shield. And mm -hmm. then you've got a... Is that a tier... That's a tier one... No, it's a tier two. It's a kinetic shield. That's it. That's the only shield on the team. And that's apparently too much for Hammy. So it's triggered him into getting a double piercing shard. Xenix eating a lot of damage. Needs to get backwards. Oh, that three-man blast trimmer! Oh, he has three points in the roadie run. That's a kill on Timbo kill. Yeah, well... Tell him after we'll have to go and tr you'll have to tweet at him there, Bacon. Suppressing fires down, not gonna be tweet him right now. I pwn you. Well, go ahead. Maybe somebody else can take <laughs> care of it for you. Maybe a Bacon fan in the chat. Turret destroyed. Timbo's like, I see you guys are fighting, and that hasn't really been working out first. I'm gonna take the turret while you guys are doing that. Yeah, I would tweet at him right now if I knew what Hammy's Twitter handle Timbo! was. But... Oh, Timbo! 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 His team's fighting. What? My hands are up in the air. I'm just like, I don't know what's actually happening. I His team you. is going down. They're yelling Timbo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they said Timbo. Timbo's a god. He's looking. He's looking for the triple kill. Timbo, get in that business. Don't let them out of here. Timbo. Timbo. Move forward. Get your keys back there. Use that. Oh. Use that. Okay. Oh, he's, oh, he's got that X red suit. Found him. He's found him. X red to into my kite and combo right there, archaic. Ooh, rest in peace. Why, why would you run away from the turret? Like run, force him to come deeper under the turret. Oh, get deeper in there. I don't think it really would have mattered, but still, he didn't. 
he he didn't know what to do. He he just knew that he had Timbo after him, and it was panic. When pan when panic sets in, sometimes you can't account for all your decisions. Well, it's uh, definitely an interesting game. I still don't know. Yeah, I don't know what Hammy's uh, Twitter is, if he even has one. Otherwise, I would tweet at him. I might just tweet at Vertigo instead. Really? Oh, no, I found it. I found it. It's on the yeah. Vertigo Black Twitter. They That's have right, it. I'll carry the cast while you're tweeting. I can cast while tweeting. I am very multi-talented. Aww. You are. That's pretty good. For you know what he was really good at like being like being in chat while casting? Four court. I swear to god that guy doesn't miss a beat. Yeah, yeah, he's actually uh quite good. He he waits for like the opportune moments and then just slips stuff into the chat. Yeah, like I'm just like trying to troll him out in chat and he comes back with some quip that's like wittier than what <laughs> I said and he's like mid sentence. I'm like, God damn it. Well he is uh definitely a great resource for Canada. There. Tweet has been sent. Tweet sent. Wow. They can casting, tweeting, making it all happen here. Vertigo Black, though. They're in a position they can definitely win this game if they play this out correctly, but doesn't feel like the momentum is in their favor. I pawn you. Doesn't feel like the momentum's in anyone's favor right now. It's 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 true, but I was I was trying to uh Timbo Kill there. has a broken myth. Yeah, no, I noticed that. He actually he picked up the, the Heavy Prism earlier on. I saw the Heavy Prism. I didn't really pay attention to it at the time. But... Well, like, he's he's in and out of these fights. He's very bursty, and if he can build up the CP, like, hey, why not? I oh, guess, but Hammy! Hammy. Oh. He's going to lit up the roadie run and the reposition with the Fountain Hammy. He's going to be able to... Pressing fire is going to come through. It's archaic, credited with the kill. And Vertigo Black, they're right back in this, but a three strike forward. The forward barrage out of Iponia. Zinix, <gasps> for light for his team! 142 damage not upon you. He wants that booty. Hammy, try to get out of here. <laughs> Hammy will just drop the squirt gun on him, and that's the ace right there. Vertigo Black are doing it. They finally find themselves an ace. We are 23 minutes in. They still have not taken a single turret. These minions might do it, though, because that turret's low. It's going to be turret number one. 2340. Turret one down. Four. Vertigo Black. Okay. Try. You know, better late than never. That is true. And now Archaic, knowing that his team is going to be able to secure the Kraken, heads on over, takes the minion mine. So the few minions they do have still in the lane will be a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. Can you talk better. about this double broken myth for me? Well, I mean, if you're just going for the piercing shards, you know, why not just turn it into the broken myth? Otherwise, they're just, you're, you know. Not really doing anything. Yeah, but why not just buy one piercing shard and then another major CP item? Because he really wanted the piercing, I guess. I'm, I, I'm not going to justify it because I don't think it's the right idea to do, but they like, are going to be finding the damage and getting through. They find one kill. Can they get more? Or is Timbo Kill going to go ham? Uh, no, ma'am. No ham. No, no, he is not. Yeah, Vertical Black. They completely turned this around. I mean, honestly, I think it's a very nice play out of them. The game was it was back and forth. It was kind of slow, but they have played this out pretty well here. Hammy with the dash and splash forward. Oh, mad cannon. That's going to be the ace here. Yeah, that is the ace, and that should be the game. Xenix will be up in time to defend, but on his own, don't think it's going to be enough. Not with a Kraken still pushing in. These turrets are going down and going down quick. Kraken is still very healthy, and oh, there will be two up to defend with the Kraken just below half health. The turret, or the crystal, is going to explode. Yeah, yeah, it did. Game one going to Vertigo Black. I mean, I w it was just uh, this, is this last minute and a half, two minutes. They just really turned it up there. Look, I mean, feel like tryhards could actually do anything and i don't know if that was a result of vertigo black just playing together a little bit better or just that that uh composition really coming into its own yeah i mean it's it was a very slow paced game uh it really didn't you know start to turn up until about 20 minutes in plus but 
like you said, eventually it just seemed like the damage of the Crystal Saw just became too much for the side of uh, of Tryhards or us to deal with. And again, I'm still, I think the most shocking thing to me is the overall lack of shield on the side of Tryhards or us. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you're going to call yourself a tryhard, you have to like itemize really heavily into the defense. Maybe that's why they're trying hard, because they don't build defense. They have to really try hard. Could be. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Dragonborn, we'll see. what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I think that you guys nailed it. Uh, that no, not enough shield on the side of tryhards, and that saw was uh, just ripping them to shreds, uh, ripping them apart. Um, you know, when you look at the build, double broken myth, and then also a piercing shard on top of it. Um, that's basic. That's twenty eight percent uh piercing coming out on the side of saw plus a shatter ga- glass. So with those stacks, uh, it it was doing a lot of damage, and it's something you do see when you get into late games. Is just a lot of pierce on the side of like a crystal carry like saw. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen that much. Twenty eight percent. That's a pretty high number. Uh, and uh, it looks like you could see other end results. Man, he was ripping them apart we're gonna get into game two in just a moment we are gonna take a quick break when we come back though this exciting matchup i mean a 25 minute game but we didn't even have a turret down till 17 or 18 minutes in the matchup uh, so that was uh pretty exciting we'll see if game number two is as thrilling as this one was when we, when we return Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. All right, everybody, we are back and getting ready for game number two. This has been a very exciting matchup so far. Vertical Black going up against Team Tryhards Are Us. And uh, Tryhards Are Us has a really strong roster. So even though they're much lower seed than Vertical Black, they are performing uh, at a much higher level, I think. And I think they really gave Vertical Black a run for their money. But Vertical Black, man... They have been playing for some time now, this split. It definitely shows as we get into game number two and they pulling out that first victory. I am, of course, joined by Four Court. Uh, woo, oh, my God. Uh, humanist and Tasty Bacon. Guys, are you here? Like, Hopefully you didn't hear that, but if you did. Uh, I, I don't think Four Court's here. But Mea Koopa. No, I'm here. Mea Koopa. If, if you do it one more time, <laughs> I don't think Closet Nerd would have a problem with me just handing the cast over to you for the rest of the evening. Probably, probably not. Well... We're going to get into game number two. Guys, what does uh, Tryhards need to do to get back into this? I don't know. I'd probably, at this point, I'd call it Four Court Jester. And I... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I kid you. I mean, coming into this, I think... Floppy at the end. And that's when Vertigo started to play real tight and precise. And, uh, and they lost it there. Other than that, they were snowballing. Everything was going properly for their team. Yes. Jace? 
Celeste is going to come out here in response to the Finn, coupled up with the Catherine. Uh, interesting choices here. I mean, yeah, Kath, uh, of course, a stun to set up the core collapse is always nice. They got combos there, a lot of CC. We'll see what uh, Tryhard Ceres want to do in response to this. Of course, Please pick the pedal. Then banned out. <clears throat> I don't know. I would love to see a pedal. Would you? I would. Why? Because pedal is amazing. Pedal is pretty amazing. Top tier analyst right there. No. Analysis. Well, you know, they ask you, you give the answer right here. I pwn you. This can't be the pedal. It's taking way too long. He's trolling. Yeah. Told you. See ya. Yep. This is. Anytime uh, this that, is that's a, a, that's a professional time, you know analysis. It's not gonna happen. Look, in order to troll, you must first understand what it takes to troll. And I'm pulling you, that was one of the sweatiest trolls he's pulled in a while. <laughs> well. Rona, not a bad pick either. I'm still a fan of Rona. Sky will be the final answer here for the side of Vertigo. Ooh. Uh, Scarf. Late game. This is going to be a late game battle with the Celeste and the Scarf going at it. That's going to be uh, a pretty tough one. Scarf really going to need a lot of reflex blocks because there's three potential stuns on Vertigo. And if that Dragon's Breath gets stunned up late game... Well, Scarf uh, is not going to be getting the kind of work he wants to get done. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I feel right now the way the, the best Scarfs are being played is barely ever using that ult at all and just poking uh, Spitfires, Goops, just going from there. We'll see how it plays out. But as you said, yes, there are a lot of stuns coming out of tryhards right now, and he'll have to prioritize a reflex at some point pretty early this game. Yeah, uh, let's see. They are going to be... Starting this one off pretty uh, standard on both sides. Taking uh, both back camps. And we'll see who gets to the mid first. It looks like as of right now, it will be the side of Vertigo Black. So they'll have that slight little advantage. Get into the shop first. Potentially bullying their opponents away from the first purchase. And especially with Hammy rotating down from the lane. That is definitely going to be the case. Oh, and yeah, they're in a very strong advantage right now. Yeah, tryhards need to recognize this, and they do, and back off. So, smart decision there to not try and make anything happen. You know, the thing is, though, yeah, they don't have those they're like crazy early game, but you're fighting an opponent that doesn't... It, on, if you get your level 2 on Sky, you have the shop rotation uh, benefit. I kind of would have liked to see them get a little aggressive there, but, you know, they're going to go right to their backs. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I, th I agree with it because you know your opponent's got to shop first. They're going to have that slight advantage already. And with Hammy rotating down from the lane, I feel like if they had tried to go for that, they would have... Uh... No, I, I'm saying, or if I'm talking about Archaic and... Oh, you wish. Tryhards, uh, they yeah. had, they shopped, they had, like, positioning advantage. They knew what was happening. The backs were going to be spawning soon. You mean Nemesis like they... Vertigo? Uh, yeah, Vertigo. Sorry, yeah. it was just it flipped around there in my head. That's why I was uh, confused. I was like, wait, what? You were just saying? <laughs> yep. I think I fell asleep for a second, but thank you for waking me back up. Well, Siri Vertigo, strike forward. Yeah, there's the aggression you were looking for. Finding a kill, potentially finding a second one, but Pony is going to be able to jump away. Yep. Out of the fray, it used uh, very nicely there, and it's going to be Archaic rotating to the backs, looking for those, but they haven't quite spawned up yet. Should be fairly soon, I think. Now, into the fray, jumping forward. Afrogum getting low. One basic out of Scarf will secure that. Hammy is pretty low as well. Eats a Spitfire. The Helios down onto Iponio. He's not going to go down. In fact, it's actually a double kill for the Scarf as he finds Celeste. Now, Archaic's on the chase into Iponio in the jungle. Iponio shouldn't be getting out of here. Ford Barrage clips him. Archaic, he's going to get the basic. And he's, he's just going to actually go for this uh, mid here. So, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing wrong at all, and they are going to be just able to find a couple kills on the side of Tryhards. And uh, despite the fact that they give up the first blood, coming back strong with the next two bloods, is going to give them a little bit of confidence here in the early goings. <laughs> we should keep counting how many bloods happen 
with, with these fights. Came back, got the first blood, came back with two bloods. And then came back with uh, three bloods into the fourth blood. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to keep track. It's I mean, they're right there on the top of the scoreboard. Oh, that's where it is. <laughs> I, my, I always I try to keep a, a running counter. Much like when I'm firing a weapon and I count my bullets. I watch Archer to learn how to do that a little bit better. Archer's really good at that. Afrogum <laughs> he activates that storm guard. He's going to kite backwards. Look at that. Spit fire plus goop combo doing so much damage. <gasps> Whoa, threading the needle. What is this? The Brett Favre of Scarf's Timbo. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Brett Favre of Scarf's. Okay, then. <sighs> It be, due to my life I just know, we don't actually have a character that just like throws stuff at enemies. And they should. I think that needs to be a thing now. Yeah. Throws it with his mouth. AKA spits. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Our keg's gonna be able to get that kill. He's gonna move into the backs, look to secure up. Uh, he's gonna grab that tree and grab those backs as well. Things looking real good there for Vertigo Black. Although, of course, Iponia did get into the backs. Of uh, of Vertigo there, so he's gonna get those. He's gonna rotate around the top side. He wants Hammy. Hammy doesn't know it's gonna be into the fray. Stunned up mid leap, and Archaic. He's gonna get the mids as well. Are they expecting this sky? I don't know. Well, Hammy's definitely playing this well. Vertigo playing that whole fight very well. They're gonna get a lot of resources out of this map and a very safe rotation to the jungle shop. Yeah, absolutely. Getting a couple kills, getting some jungle camps stolen away, getting themselves a bit of a gold lead, about 500 gold in their favor. It is going to be a uh, interesting one. Weapon Sky, which I like seeing Weapon Sky, especially when you already have a crystal laner. Death from above going to be blocking off the path, and this is a kill. Could be a second one immediately followed, but instead Archaic will try to get some pre damage onto Timbo kill to make this a potential third kill. The forward barrage did not connect, though, and we end up with just two more bloods going over to Vertigo Black. <laughs> oh, I love you, Bacon. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Two more bloods going their way. Let's see what a Vertigo want to do here. And uh, it's archaic. Just He's going to take away the backs again. He's going to get the mids again. And the problem this time is that Oponu's not in a position where he can get to their back. So he did trade that last time. It's not going to happen here. Once again, they make a safe rotation to the shop. Their composition's really coming into its own right now. Yeah, it really is. And it's the Celeste it definitely comes online a bit earlier than Scarf does. While they're both late game monsters, I definitely think Celeste is uh, a bit stronger earlier in the game. Scarf also went for a Frostburn first. I have said multiple times before that I disagree with Frostburn first on Scarf. I feel the way about Frostburn first on Scarf as Action Jackson does about Frostburn first on Sky. How does Jackson feel about it? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what I find so funny about that statement, though? Mm -hmm. You know, the European Summer Champions were carried by a player that went Frostburn first on Scarf many times. Yeah, I, but... It's still not something I agree with. Okay. Seems good. There's there's a lot of things that happen in Vainglory at competitive levels that various people don't agree with. <laughs> Penguin Suits is in the chat. He says, Hall, Hall of Farm, Packers quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Timbo! Oh! Oh! Oh, Timbo, Timbo was just so close, close to dying. I am going to... Wait three minutes and go look at the Twitch stream and see just how low he got on health. Pretty low. Because we don't get to see actual numbers on the in-game spectate client. That's only on the super fancy schmancy standalone spectate client mm -hmm. that Dragonborn is using to showcase all of the action and strategies and decision makings to all of you. It looks like Archaic's having a lot of fun here. Well, <laughs> until that happened... Oh, look at that! Archaic is a god! Asuri strike the death from above to zone, baits the ult out of Timbo kill, and I pwn you into the fray onto Archaic, but he's stunned up by Afro Gum. It's a little bit of that uh, Ford Barrage coming out of Archaic, though. That's not too bad there, as the fountain does come out from Zinnick to keep him uh, in a in pretty healthy place. Hammy rotating out from base. Actually, he's going to take the backs here for his team. Sometimes that's the call. 
when uh, this type of positioning is happening. But once again, Vertical Black looks like they're getting into engagement, and Hammy is not he just here. And Hammy, he's going to find Iponio. Helios down. Well, he's going to drop another one, but he's already dead as Archaic found that kill. Death from above used to zone. It's the next backwards, and this is uh, Timbuko, last man standing for his team once again. Another fight going the way of Vert to go black. And it looks like uh, Archaic's going to get the mid and move to take away the box again. He's been doing such a good job. Celeste actually finding the kill on the Timbo in the lane. I didn't really expect that, but Hammy just used boots, got into position, landed those skill shots, and made it happen. Oh. Yeah, I mean, sorry about that. My my headset just uh, sort of died on me, so <laughs> that was that was good times. Didn't give me any sort of battery low notification or anything. I pwn you is gonna go down as Archaic finishes off that kill. I get pwned. Yeah, Zenix also gonna be taking some damage, but oh, Timbo kill. Yeah, Scarf's a it's a little bit too far in the game to be uh, underestimating that kind of damage coming out of Scarf. Yeah, that got awkward real fast, honestly. I, I felt like Archaic just completely overestimating his potential. And <clears throat> I don't like what's happening, Bacon. I, I gotta be honest, I don't like what's happening, although maybe it's gonna work. But Archaic with the breaking point into double monocle. You wanna talk about it? Uh, breaking point and double monocle. It's a, it's a really strong build. It allows you to get... You have super high crit rate. I believe it's... Uh, 80% off of those two items off of the two uh, monocles and you then just every single one of your shots is a crit just about so you start getting broken point breaking point stacks very quickly and I mean it just it does work they the track record of the build kind of speaks for itself once the second monocle on is sky. completed on sky I think it works on anyone Ask Von C. That's the weapon power build he builds on literally any hero, just about. So uh, we can see it going in right now. All right. Well, look at those crits. Yeah, it's, it's it's working here. Should it be working? Is the question. Well, uh, credit where credits due. Archaic's gonna get a double kill there. Solar Storm was ready to clean it up. Hammy had that kill secure. Solar Storm coming through, but it's gonna be Vertigo pressuring turret and gold mine simultaneously. Everything's going their way this game. But it, and the net worth doesn't really feel like it's showing the full story. It really doesn't. Uh, this is Vertigo Black feels like significantly farther ahead than the scoreboard shows. I mean, that lead is starting to grow now, but they have really been in control. They just haven't really been pushing the issue too much. They've just kind of been, you know, finding small skirmishes, getting one, maybe two kills at a time. And not really, you know, putting a ton of pressure into the lane, but they're that now they're really starting to ramp it up, especially now that Archaic has that first uh, monocle. You can see the damage is just massive. Uh, yeah, he got breaking point stacks pretty quick there. And uh, well, we look at the score here. Archaic has nine kills. Hammy has four kills. You would say that it feels like Sky is a little bit more of a threat at this point. Just not a whole lot of armor out there, though. No, there really isn't. You know, I mean, you've got a tier two armor on the Finn and a tier one on the Rona, and that's it. And this is kind of the same mistake that was made uh, in the previous game, where the crystal power seemed to be a threat, but now Dragon's Breath doing some work. Um, until he got deleted. Well, <laughs> Tempo walked right into I don't know, just everything he didn't want to. Iponia jumps in, Red Mist will buy him a little bit of time, but that's going to be the ace going the other way. Is Archaic is the only one that goes down for Vertigo. Choke point turret destroyed. It's only going to be a couple seconds before Timbo and team respawn here. But at this point, I'm not really sure what they do. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but it was double fountain to come out. And you may have mentioned this. Uh, Iponia okay. got to the second fountain. Um, but they're popped at the same time. That they are. Is that and... acceptable? Do you get double the hill when that happens, Bacon? For <laughs> we have some people new to Vainglory that are watching the stream. They may not understand. Yeah, they may not right? have been watching back back in winter when this first became an issue, because um, teams were doing this all the time in the winter season. Fountain of Renewal does not <clears throat> stack. 
No. If you activate it twice, if you know two different people on your team activate it, you do not get the effect twice. It is a buff that is applied to you, and it just renews the duration of the buff. So if you use two fountains at the same time, you are getting literally nothing out of that use. Hmm. Well, it feels like it would be pretty powerful, but the way you describe it, it seems like you wouldn't <laughs> want to use those at the same time. <clears throat> Tryhards are us. They're going to go ahead and reposition here. That's four treads into a better, well, safer position to felt like, but I point you, he's going to... It's going to be one fountain. Zenix is silenced up due to the Afrogum with that blast tremor. Actually, they kind of stack those again, but it doesn't really matter. Archaic, the rest of Vertigo just... No, that was actually... That was much better use of the fountains. It just mm, Yeah, matter. okay. It was better. It was like four seconds. The op the single most optimal use is six seconds between them. So any anything more than one second is still better use than using them at the same time. That was four mm -hmm. seconds between them that time, but just the damage is just too much. Archaic has the second uh, Tyrant's Monocle, and the damage is just way too much for Tryhards or us to deal with. And the crystal is going to go down. Vertigo Black, take the series 2-0. Wow, these casters are critical. That's pretty funny. I feel like we've even given the guys break here, honestly. Tryhards are us. They're going to go down. Vertical Black moving forward. And, uh, well, I think Tryhards have got some pretty good players. They just don't have the better team as of right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their synergy seems times uh, decision making not always on point. And. Unfortunately, like it just felt like, like you said, definitely some very skilled players there, but Vertigo Black just sort of felt like they were more cohesive. I definitely agree. Well, we'll see how it uh, works out for them as they move uh, further into the tournament, though. Uh, Dragon, what do we got? Uh, what do we got coming up next, man? Well, at this moment, we have concluded three rounds of the winners and losers. So every team has played three rounds thus far. Um, what that means is that uh, we are actually done for the night. Uh, so much quicker than last we, uh, last split, I would say. Uh, the biggest thing change here is that we are doing it to try to get to about three rounds. So we're not going way late into the night. Um, and it just so happened that all the teams concluded all three of those rounds thus far. So, guys... Uh, that was the last matchup that we got to see. Uh, the loser brackets are all caught up, so we have nothing to show there. Well, it was a, it was a good day of uh, Challenger Series. Vertigo showing a lot of what we saw in the last split. They appear to have just made some small improvements, and I was crit very critical on Archaic's build. I didn't really agree with it necessarily, but he made it work here, so credit where credit's due. I told you, and it's. I think there's going to be changes made to these particular items because, as has been shown now by multiple players, you can kind of just take the you know breaking point double monocle build on any ranged hero, and you'll have a pretty good time once you get the build completed. So, it's. Uh, I would. I would expect that SCMC is most likely looking into it because. That is definitely not something that they want to be the case. Mm, a range tax. Something, right? To yeah, they, they already did make a small change to the breaking point, but I think there's uh, th I think there needs to be something bigger. I agree. Uh, yeah, it's something that they've struggled with, I think, sometimes to balance these range heroes, and they've put taxes on some of these items to make it like not as effective on a ranged hero. Uh, we'll see. Maybe... Uh... Crit's the next thing to come, but it's very effective for Vertigo Black. Man, they they took a definitely a really strong team, a team that probably was uh, ranked a little bit lower than their true uh, potential, and uh, they definitely showed that they deserve to be that number four seed uh, up here on the top side of the bracket. So they stay on the winner's side. Tryhards are us does not get knocked out yet, though. They are just moving to the loser side of the bracket. So um, these teams, this is actually Group A, all of these teams will play again um, that lost here just one time, uh, but they'll be playing next week, next Tuesday, on the second half of Group A. Tomorrow, we bring you guys Group B. Uh, that is a whole other group uh, that is going to be taking place the rest of the 64 teams, and we do, of course, have the bracket here that we can show you guys um, as uh, the, the remaining... 32 teams that have not yet played today, they will be playing in the second group. 
uh, and uh, it's kind of been the theme in this split um, in this season uh, with uh, the teams uh, being split up across these two segments kind of so uh, this is what we've got going for you guys tomorrow group number B a lot of exciting matchups here uh, the casters you guys don't have really good visibility of it but uh, what you can see is that we have um, you know Noble Pro Team Enix uh, as the two frontliners? Uh, Pinga Reform, the team that you know was really expected to perform really well uh, last split, they kind of fell a little bit short. Uh, they are there in this uh, bracket as well. So three really strong teams. Uh, we expect to keep an eye on them as we get into that bracket. But with that, guys, uh, thanks for coming out and casting some great matches. It was really exciting. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow at the same time, 5 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you guys tune in. We'll be back. See you then. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy.